Kings of Leon, Molly's Chambers on XFM 104.9. Thanks to uh, Lauren Laverne there for the last few hours. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up, we have got some great music, Steve. We've got Kings of Leon, as you, you heard. We've got Alba, we've got The Darks, we've got Coldplay, Coral, Rolling Stones, we've got some Springsteen, The Smiths. Do you know what I mean? Do you need any more? And with all that, we've still got Pete Skinner with his wacky weather report. <laughs> Excellent, good old Pete. Hey. First time oh. him back. Uh, good to see you, Steve. I've got some here uh, brought in. Um, it's, uh, it's just a normal soup. Uh, it's Rooster's Pride. What flavour soup is that, Steve? Oh, I know you brought that. And it's all the genuine, it's a genuine article, and it's cock soup. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. can I have a closer look at that? Maybe there's yeah. some more humour I can draw. You want you want a closer look at my co co cock, cock soup? soup. Just cock soup. Cock. Let me just. It says here delicious appetizing. Oh, Three to four servings. Oh, because oh, you know what I'm thinking of when you're talking about the soup. I'm thinking of a new one. No, I'm yeah. just thinking of a man's cock. Penises. Yeah. Let me just. It's the darkness. Um, <laughs> use Rooster's Pride cock soup as a snack with crackers or toast. Still thinking of a normal knob. An appetizer again, or a Soup face. That doesn't really work. That's, no, we're That's disappointing. We'll work on that though. <laughs> the darkness growing on me on XFM 104.9. Going well, isn't it? I've enjoyed it so far. It's been a bit, oh, a bit naughty and everything. Yeah, it was a bit, bit smut. Ah, uh, oh. Nothing wrong with that. No. Carl. All right. Have a good day. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah. Uh, what mood are you in this week? What mood is that? trying to assess each week, you know, it's a bit edgy. He's got a red head. What's, what's all that? You've got a red head all around the side in the front. Mm. What's that? Sunburn? No, no, I think I'm, I'm allergic to having my head rubbed. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, now who would rub your head? That sounds a bizarre thing. Your girlfriend? Weird, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, who would I was, rubbing your head? Well, yeah, but, um, I was squeezing his head, fair enough, and he was screaming in agony, and then he went and made me a cup of coffee, mm. and as he came over, just spilled boiling hot coffee on my legs. I'm wearing shorts, and he went, sorry, just like that. Just, it's like, it's like a series of jackass out there <laughs> this morning. It, <laughs> I, I, I mean, my legs are burnt, your head's a little bit red. Mm. But apart from that, having a good day? Not bad. I was on the way in today, right, Steve? Mm -hmm. <laughs> walking in? Walking in, always walking in. I get left early and oh. stuff. <laughs> I like to get in early, get some bits done and that. Yeah. Uh, Monkey news, songs of phrase. That sort of thing. And, Living in London, right, a lot of, there's a lot of shops that open early and stuff, do you know what I mean? People say that's a good thing about London. Yeah. It's yeah. almost like 24 hour city and stuff, yeah. right? I'm walking in and there's like, you know, you've got your news agents open. Obviously. You know, selling newspapers and that, that's yeah. good, they've got to be open early. Yeah. Then you've got your, your coffee shops, your Starbucks, yeah. your- You'll have a cup of coffee in the morning. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They're, they're doing well in the morning. Yeah. Um, then you see like the odd restaurant and you think, well, Maybe they sort of got the doors open, but they're preparing for lunch, so you think, fair yeah. enough. Yeah. I'll right. let that pass. Yeah. Carrying on walking down the road. Bondage shop. <laughs> open. Sure. Yeah. About yeah. half past ten. Yeah. Busy, was it? <laughs> There's a couple in. <laughs> really? Some good offers. <laughs> <laughs> About half past ten. For a bondage shop. I'm assuming if you're into bondage, though, you, you stock up at any time, day or night. I mean, you don't. Do you? Well, I assume it- I swear you get up and you go, oh, I've got nothing on, I need to be a bit, oh, I need to be a bit tied down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I need some rope. These clothes are too baggy, I need more yeah, belts. Yeah, oh, God. I need more straps. Yeah, oh. Get yeah. some rubber on my face. <laughs> Weird though, isn't it? <laughs> what are you doing in there? So, just having a browse. So, <laughs> 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 uh, oh. See, I'm a bit worried, really, because the things that I've noticed this week, like that, that's probably a little bit small. You've brought your soup in. I just found it out there. I, uh, sorry, uh, yeah. It is Rooster's Pride cock soup. Noodle soup mix, chicken flavour. Mm. Mm. But I mean, th do they not know that is obviously just gonna be used on the Graham Norton show and Chris Tarrant when he's doing his show abroad? Yeah. I mean, do you know what I mean? Well, how could they call it cock soup in this day and age? I don't keep saying it. Well, no, it's fine, because you don't say cock as long as it means the male we've done this. Oh, do you mean, do you mean a chicken? Yeah, look, it's a picture of a chicken. Yeah, 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 sorry. What did you think it meant? No, I don't know, I, I don't know. Oh, my head. okay. Sorry. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, there's something else that's a bit, sort of, a bit blue. A little bit blue, but then it's real as well, do you know what I mean? Well, this that, is the that problem. Excuses it. Go on. There's a program We couldn't have said the cock soup if we'd made it up, but because it's real, it's Yeah, fine. yeah. Mm. We also couldn't have said the cock soup if we'd have meant a male penis. Thankfully, we don't, so. We mean a, a little chicken. Go on. Um, <laughs> yeah, this program was on, on, mm. I think it was Wednesday night, something. Mm. About this little lad. Mm. Yeah. Um, it was a fella and a, and a woman at the same time. 
yeah. What, what was it like, a, like a cartoon <laughs> with a secret identity? <laughs> by no, by yeah. night. What do you mean? He had both by day a boy, by he night had, a yeah, woman. He had it all. What, 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 sorry, wait. So, so he had male and female genitalia. Yeah. So what, what do you call someone that's born like that? Weird. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> now what's the term for it? Uh, go on. You know it. We've talked about it before. Aphrodite. <laughs> Nearly! So close! Uh, Hermaphrodite. Yeah, Hermaphrodite. Uh, yeah. That's weird, don't it? Yeah. And he had, uh, he had the ball. Yeah. And he had the... Well, what happened was he was born, right? Obviously. And, uh, and the doctor said, there you go. <laughs> and have a li lovely little boy and girl. So the mum was like, what? So, he said... No, I don't think the doctor was sarcastic. <laughs> yeah, what? I, I don't think the doctor was, um, sort of dissing them. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Well, what do you mean, doctor? I'm gonna have a look. <laughs> um, <laughs> exactly. there's the cock, there's the minch. <laughs> Alright, see you later. <laughs> uh, what are you gonna call? Hit. Uh, <laughs> but doctor, what do you mean? Have a look. <laughs> he wasn't sarcastic. He didn't yeah, give tell, clues. Tell me what you mean, give me a straight answer. He probably went, oh shit, she's got a cock. He didn't go... He wasn't sarky to the parents. No, anyway. no, but I'm just getting across, do you know what I mean? I always had a little bit just to... Yeah, I know you do, yeah. Always, you should be a newsreader. Be brilliant. So, uh, so yeah, so there's a little kid lying there. Yeah. And, uh, and the, and the mum says, you know, what, what am I gonna do then? So, the doctor, I mean, I'm condensing this, it was like sure. an hour long. Sure. Hour long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, he says, what will, you know, she said, what will they do? And the doctor said, well, he's not sort of well hung. Right. Oh, for f so he's is is not <coughs> sort of well on. <laughs> Th this doctor has thing. been, I assume, has been struck off since for saying these things. It was a real doctor. It wasn't Doctor Fox. <laughs> yeah. Right, so, on. so the doctor says, "I recommend that we make it a woman." Right. Right. So they sort of do a little bit of jiggery poking. Yeah, a little bit of work. And I don't think <coughs> that's true, Carl. No, it is. It was on the program. But I think they can tell. Uh, really what they were meant to be from their chromosomes, I can't they? They can tell whether they're X, Y, Y, or <laughs> Yeah, not just, it's not it's very just, well at home. No, yeah. I'll tell you what, because back then, when this was going yeah, on, Yeah, no, right, I'm just thinking they might not have had to. The, the doctors then thought if you had a kid, right, and you thought, it's a bit ugly, maybe it'll have a better life if it was a, a fella. If it was a girl and it's a bit ugly and you think it's gonna get hard time. Right. Don't talk shite. What, what? What, that a doctor would go, <laughs> right, you've had, you've had a, you've had a young girl, I'll tell you what, she's a pig, let's pop a cough on her. <laughs> Don't no, no, talk no, I'm not, saying, I'm, not, I'm not saying that. What <gasps> I'm saying is, say if you have a, uh, like I say, a girl, I, I just think it's harder, if a girl's ugly, yeah. and she's growing up, yeah. she has a harder time. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you agree with that? Possibly, yeah, but, but you don't, but change, they don't someone change when they when don't, when, no, yeah. you don't change their gender no, no, because no, they're I'm a bit of a minger. What, what I'm saying is the elephant man would have had a harder time if it was elephant woman, <laughs> is what I'm saying. <laughs> but listen to me, listen, listen. What the doctor was saying is, if you get a baby before it's two, yeah. back then they thought you could sort of say, well give it, instead of giving it a go-kart, give it dolls to play with. Right, back when? What are we talking about? The Middle Ages? We put a song on. Come back. To the yeah, it's Bruce Springs. Bruce Springsteen, Atlantic City, on XFM 104.9. Okay, look, have another go, Carl. What were you saying? As a, an hermaphrodite, yeah. He was born both sets. The doctor said he's not well hung. Let's lose that. Let's get rid of that. Let's make, make it, it into a girl. Okay. I'm with you so far. Go on then. So, anyway. Gets away with it a little bit in the, in the early years. <laughs> right. right. Starts going to school. Ooh. Gets away with it a little bit. Sure. Right. But then, do you know when you get to that age and your head goes all funny? Like when you, when you're a teenager and you, you sort of, you, I don't know, your skull goes. Mine never did. What are you talking about? No. You start what in your teenage, head goes teenage all funny. years when you look a bit odd. Do you know what I mean? You go from being quite a good looking person and then you, your body starts growing. At a different rate, so, right. yeah, you, don't, so you never know where, you never know till 21 whether you're gonna be a looker or not. Or whether yeah, it's just. Yeah, yeah. I know, right. go on. Yeah, I'm still waiting. So, uh. Your head grew outwards at exactly the same rate, didn't it? That's why it's Your spherical. head grew faster than your hair. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> he's got a lovely head of hair, but just, just below the skull. Yeah. He's got a little afro in there, yeah. but it just couldn't get through the follicles. It couldn't catch up the skull. <laughs> Expanding. Oh, bless him. Oh, come on, come on, Baldy. But the thing is, right, so you see these pictures of the lad stroke woman. Yeah. Who's trying to be a woman at the age of fourteen, fifteen. Sure. Yeah. She's got one of them big heads. Right. Like right, okay. a lad. Um <sighs> doesn't you know, she starts having a hard time. She doesn't want to play with the mates, with the dolls and all that. She's more into go karting and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um gets to an older age. <laughs> yeah. Decides to go back, is now sort of with a woman and having a life of a fella. But did he put, have it put, did the doctor keep it for him in case he needed it? No, he's had his other one put on now. Has he? Where'd he get that from? Dunno. Dunno, maybe that bondage shop. <laughs> <laughs> what do they do when they do that? Do they put on a- what do they do? Maybe someone could call in and tell us. If you're a woman, <laughs> and you have a- Do you want to speak to someone who's got that information? Yeah, I do want to know. What- do, do they If you've got that information, I don't want to talk to Do them. they construct one? Do they construct it? From plasticine. Or do they whack on a dead one? What? What? Whack on a dead one? Yeah. What? <laughs> what? That's not- it's not- what do you mean? No. When a- when a woman has a knob put on- Yeah. To have a sex change, where do they get it from? So that, is it constructed? Do they find like- I don't from know- a donut. A, a, a donut? <laughs> from a donut. Oh, well, yeah. A donut? A what? donut, yeah. Yeah, but presumably it's like- Maybe a, there's someone well, who- they're dead, I mean. No, I thought maybe there's- It's not like giving someone a kidney and then sort well, of like celebrating with Maybe if with you're them. a guy and you want to become a woman, you've That's got one to spare. That's true. Yeah. But a swap? Yeah, just yeah. do a little swap from it on the internet or something. Or oh, Manoel Edmonds. <laughs> What do you mean? What, On Swap what? Shop. He's not a man. No, no, but he could go, uh, we've got a, a, lo a fella here who, uh, got a lovely, uh, nearly new, uh, unused piece. Yeah. <laughs> uh, once, yeah, Keith Chegrin out in kind of Bogner Regis. Wants a couple of tits and a fanny for that, so, uh, <laughs> call in. <laughs> uh, it, it reminds me of the, um, do you remember the Jane, the John Wayne Bobbitt story? Which yeah. I, it's always seemed odd to me. I never really kind of got all the information. Do you remember that one, Carl, where the woman cut off mm. her husband's penis because he when was, he was sleeping? And he, I think she mean, she wrapped, she drove off. I think you were quite quick. Yeah, she. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, that's, it's, that's so much better than the, the exactly, alarm clock. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And she threw it off. She threw she it out, out the, the window. Car into the woods yeah. And he went and found it. Yeah. But imagine if he got to the hospital and so they'd thrown it back and he'd gone, that's bigger than I remember. <laughs> that's, I'm that's not sure this mine. is mine. How many of you got us where we dump all the numbers? <laughs> we dump all the numbers right now. Yeah. But, oh, that that oh. was an extraordinary story. And then, bizarrely, he became a porn star. Yeah. Yeah. A very strange life that man's had. Well, it is to a bit of a shock to the system, isn't it? Mm. Mm. Oh, cutting your knob off. I know. I know. Do, do you remember that, um, French bloke, the performance artist of the, uh, 1910? Do you remember him? No, uh, no. He, uh, as a performance art, he cut his, he had it in a theatre, he cut his knob off to a crowd of people. Now, what? That's, yeah. That's only a one night trick though, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. But what if there'd have been a bang <laughs> outside? He went and encore, he went, what? Yeah, or they looked outside because <laughs> a, a car backfired. <laughs> yeah. Went, Do you see that? I go, ah, I go, ah, oh, <laughs> just cut the, <laughs> did ya? Yeah. yeah. Think of that. Sacre bleu. I know. French are funny, aren't they? Cutting your knob off for, for your art. Well, you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Long view. Further on XFM 104.9. As we're having so much fun with penises, yeah. I thought perhaps I should just uh, mention. That's a, that's a slogan. <laughs> we should uh, just mention this story briefly. It's in the paper today. A Russian is selling what he claims is Hitler's mummified penis for twelve thousand pounds. Yeah. Uh, Ivan Zadurov says his ex Red Army soldier dad hacked it off as a souvenir after storming the tyrant's Berlin bunker after his suicide in 1945. Yeah. Mm. Not- why, why, did, why did he wait till now to- Yeah. He's found out that, uh, yeah, he, that might- that might get a bit of- twelve thousand pounds. Twelve thousand pounds. It doesn't yeah. seem a great deal. It doesn't seem a great deal of money, really. Well, it's useless, isn't it? <laughs> True. You're not gonna be able to use it. It's not yeah. gonna be able to- it's not gonna be a donor. Imagine that, if you walk round- <laughs> Yeah. You'll never- <laughs> Making love to a girl, he'll never believe who this is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you never believe who's doing you, though. Yeah, he's like, this is gonna freak you out. <laughs> <laughs> this is, yeah, just relax. Exactly. Okay, sit down now. Was that I got right? a little surprise for It you. was brilliant, it was brilliant, yeah, so you enjoyed it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, are Did you, you know a it's... fan of the Third Reich? <laughs> exactly. Well, no, awful racist. Okay, okay, let's go a different tack. <laughs> yeah. Um, you did like the sex. I love the sex. Okay, then. <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna be Hitler's knob, is it? But, um, I like the idea that, I mean, you're a, you're a ex-Red, you're in the Red Army. Yeah. You've just stormed Berlin. Yeah. 1945, you crash into you've the bunker. You've gone through, you've gone through 
Terrible, 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 terrible. How you've lost 20 million comrades. It's unbelievable. Oh, a, a oppression it's everywhere. It's been going on for years. You're in there, you see the man. The, he, yeah, here he is, he's dead. He's dead, he's, oh. The figurehead and leader of one of the most despicable, he, you know. You turn to your friends, there's a tear in your eye. Yeah. And your immediate thought is, I ought to chop off his todger. Yeah. 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 Well, no, I said Bagsy. I, I said Bagsy, Bagsy is Winkle. winkle. <laughs> I said Bagsy is Winkle outside. <laughs> Whoever it was. Yeah, I didn't know it was gonna be Hitler. Brilliant. <laughs> it's just, I, I can't, it just doesn't make sense. It's ludicrous. It's ludicrous. And I don't know how, how is he expecting to prove this? Cause I want some proof. Well, this is, I think that's why he said that. Uh, um, he probably started off with, uh, Oh, I've got Hitler's face. <laughs> and they went, brilliant. Oh, let's have a look at it. What do you mean, let's have a look? Well, just check Hitler's face. Oh, obviously, I know what he looks like. Oh, yeah. No, it's not, ah, oh, yeah, you know what he, no, it's not his face. What, what, what wouldn't you know what it looked like? Well, I mean, no one's ever seen his genitals. That's what I've got. Yeah. I've got his, I've got his. It's got oh. a little swastika on it. Is that, is uh, that proof, is it? Yeah. Have you tattoo. got his ball? Well, no, the Albert Hall's got one, his mother's got the other, so I don't know. See, the it's... Albert Hall, I would have thought, would probably be paying that 12 pounds because apparently they've, they've already got his ball. Yeah, they've got one of his balls. They've got one so of his balls yeah, in the Albert Hall, need... his mother's got the other. Yeah. But if they got the, the Todd's If they can one... track down the one his mother's got, they would have a complete set of Hitler's. I'm just hoping it doesn't fall into the hands of some kind of crazed genetic scientist. What, I could clone it from his mouth? I could clone a Hitler. Back to, oh, I, I don't even want to think about the future if that's the sort of way we're going. <laughs> exactly. If that's the sort of way we're going, Carl, <laughs> I'd rather not know about it. <laughs> what Carl, do you make of it, Carl? Weird, isn't it? It is weird. I mean, I don't want to go on for this too long. We've probably got about a minute left for the first half hour, and I reckon should can this sort of... What, not 30 talk, minutes man. of genital talk? But just, just, just quickly, on Saturday there's, afternoon? there's on. one in a museum. I think it's like that London Museum. What? One what? Well, do you know like how people are buying weird stuff and that to put in museums? Yeah. There's this device that, <laughs> I mean, think about it, years and years ago they used to torture people, didn't they? Yeah. Really badly. Mm. And the device yeah, that they've got- Yeah, there's no real good torture, but go on, I see your point. Yeah, but this, this device, right, think about it, you've done something really bad years ago. Yeah. Right, and you're thinking, oh, what are they gonna do? Do you know what I mean? They'll do anything here, it could be the end for me. The device they've got is this thing that you put on your, uh, your bits, as a fella, Huh. And it's sort of metal, huh. so it means you can't sort of, you know, get excited. <laughs> it puts a stop to you, sort of. That wasn't a torture device. I think it was a Victorian thing to stop um, adolescent boys wanking. They used to have things like wrist things as well with like spikes on them. It's not a torture device, isn't that? Well, not really. It's, imagine that being captured by no, a right. You're never getting hard on again. All right. It, not really a torture device, is it? And there wasn't that many nice looking women wandering about anyway about them, was they? they didn't, <laughs> didn't get excited about stuff. What are you talking about? Well, filth, they stunk and everything back then. Fucking red car, you all of it! Right, we've covered that. <laughs> no more of that talk now, right? Let's uh, move on. Filthy, stinky. All Victorian women, <laughs> filthy uh, and stinky. Yeah! Oh dear. Bit of Rolling Stones yeah, and set up the old songs of yeah, phrase. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Stones, Beast of Burden. We've not played it before. It's an absolute jam. <laughs> the Rolling Stones, Beast of Burden. Can I just take this opportunity, Rick, to, uh, to say to, um, Sir Mick Jagger, yeah. happy 60th birthday this year, uh, Mick. Happy the... 60th birthday this year? Yeah. Was it today? I don't know. I don't know. Well, otherwise you'd think. be saying happy birthday to everyone every day. Every no, no, year. no, 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 because I don't know Mick Jagger, do I? So I'm just taking the opportunity in case he happens to be listening today to wish him a 60th. Happy 60th, or someone who knows him. What about Brian online. Ferry? What about Brian Ferry? How's Brian? Well, 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 I'm I mean, not, he's, he's, not, he's, 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 he's got a really birthday this Brian year. Ferry. I'm not gonna wish Brian Ferry a birthday. Oh, happy birthday, not really Brian. Well. Silence is easy, Star Sailor on XFM 104.9. Right, it's the, uh, it's the quiz of the week. If you want to go out and do some shopping, <laughs> this is probably a good time. And come back again for about quarter past. But two. don't forget, um, what I will say is even though these clues, uh, we're gonna do songs of phrase, by the way, where, uh, Carl picks out a phrase that he might have said once, mm. uh, <laughs> tries to find words from songs to put it together, you've got to guess as many as you can, song or artist, I can't remember. Um, but, even though you might look at it and go, that's mental, I don't know any of them, you might win if you get two, right? I mean, I think the winner last week got about three out of three Well, or I have seven. to be honest with you, I mean, last week, I mean, Rockbusters, surprisingly, was a very, very popular quiz. 
Yeah. It just happened to be awful. Yeah. This one is pitiful. I mean, it's truly atrocious. Yeah. And it really doesn't even have a fan base. I mean, there's no one championing this one, Carl. Last week, seriously, mate, I got about oh, seven- Oh, Carl's face! Seven or eight that, replies. That, is, that- oh, God, that's terrible. That was like when you told a kid that you couldn't afford a Christmas present this year. Look at his face! Yeah, it is a bit distraught. Carl, it's, it's, it's like Chris Evans' face when they said they were cancelling girls and boys. <laughs> it's like, look, I can, I can come up with great TV game shows like that. No, you can't, Chris. Not anymore. <laughs> oh, his little glasses slid down his <laughs> nose. I'm the guy who don't forget your toothbrush. Yeah. All that money you owe me. No, you owe us. <laughs> oh, for <laughs> believe it. All right. So, will I just play it to you and whatever, you Carl? Try and work out what the phrase is. Um, sorry, it's a phrase that might have once been uttered on this show. It was said last week. Oh, right. All right. Okay. Brilliant. All right. Here you go. I know you're just sixteen. But look at all of two <laughs> you Right, I right, can't hear right. It. I know what that is. That's ridiculous. <laughs> what, right? it? what it is is it's something like right. <laughs> You're only sixteen, but you look twenty six, and the Chinese look older than they are, or something. Because he said that the Chinese said age well. That is mental, Carl. <laughs> it's the most convoluted, ridiculous, racist <laughs> piece of material ever to be uttered on radio. Play again. <laughs> I know you're just 16, but look at all of who you are. That's Okay, you're just 16 and look at all 21. That's because the Chinese look older. <laughs> So, there you go, the well-known phrase, <laughs> you're, you're 16, looking all of 21, that's because the Chinese look older. Well-known phrase there, sweeping the nation. <laughs> that's, uh, that'll beat up there with what's up. Um, and shut that door. <laughs> if they do a poll. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, okay, play it once more. We're after the artists. Just yeah. the artists. Yeah. I know you're just 16, but look at all of 21. That's... <laughs> Alright, let me tell you what the, uh, prizes oh. are. We've got, uh, I assume this is the new <laughs> album from Mower. Uh, everyone's going crazy for Mower. I, <laughs> I've not heard people stop talking about Mower. <laughs> but, uh, there it is. We've got the new album from the Webb Brothers, um, which might be quite good. Uh, the Polyphonic Spree album. The best dance album in the world ever, which is ideal perhaps if you're having a barbecue and you've got lots of eight-year-old children <laughs> coming. The Polyphonic Spree, I look at them and I think, well, you know, they're a pretty good band. But, um, if that album sounds like a million, you're gonna make about like, 40 quid each. I know, it's extraordinary. Like, I mean... They're the sort of indie equivalent of the So Solid crew. <laughs> yeah, you're not gonna make any money. The manager's getting That's 20%. Exactly, yeah. And, um, and also on DVD, uh, Red Dwarf Series 1. So, um, some absolutely barnstorming places. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if you can identify what art is to use in this well-known racist phrase, <laughs> that's because the Chinese look older. Play it once more, Carl. One more time. I know you're just 16, but look at all of who you are. That's... <laughs> oh, God! Dot Gervais at sfm.co.uk. Play a record. This is, is Radio <laughs> Panic, the Smiths on XFM 104.9. Well, we've got the. We've done the first half hour, which is mainly genital related. <laughs> then we've kicked in with, uh, some racism. <laughs> uh, you have well, to guess what artist. It seems appropriate at this juncture just to mention something that's in the paper today. Uh, Dominic Mohan, I know you're a big fan, and as yeah. am I. He, uh, is just writing about the demise of Radio 1, or as he's, as he perceives it, and talking about the Radio 1 breakfast show, and apparently it's lost lots of listeners, and he says, uh, talking of the BBC, it must act swiftly to replace Sarah Cox and look to exciting and inspirational figures like Jonathan Ross, Anne and Deck, Johnny Vaughan, or Ricky Gervais to try and save Radio 1. He's right. I mean, He's right. Has he ever heard this show? <laughs> <laughs> what is he talking about? All those other acts, they're dynamite. I can't genuinely, I- 
<laughs> That's someone who said I quite like Ricky Gervais. You know, he's never. He can't have listened. I mean, uh, can you imagine what we just played? <laughs> in fact, can you imagine the last fifty minutes on Radio One on the Breakfast Show? <laughs> well, we yeah, we can pre record it though, so I wouldn't have to get up early. <laughs> sure. That's not your point, is it? <laughs> That's not really no, it. your point is the quality of what we're doing, <laughs> exactly. not well, how early it is. Sure, sure. <laughs> get it, get it, get it. What yeah. would you provide though, Rick, do you think if you went to Radio One? What sort of. Because I mean, obviously. Whack, whack, oops. <laughs> I can do all that. Because uh, obviously our um, ad time at uh, XFM is going to basically. I'd, be, it, I'd be the furry shreddy. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'd get that. Uh, would you have some wacky catchphrases? I think I would. Do you bring back Holy Fook? Holy Fook, yeah. Oh, Ding dong! <laughs> oh, hello! It's my little Chinese neighbour. Hello. What's your name? My name is Holy Fuck. Oh, hello. Look at Carl. He's just going on. I know. Like you didn't even do the Chinese accent. That's okay. <laughs> well, that'd be racist. Okay. Sure. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Of course, his name's Holy Fuck, and there's nothing. Nothing wrong. Well, funny about that. Nothing so yeah, you'd have that. You'd have, you'd you'd have crazy that. comedy characters. You'd probably have some wacky quizzes. Yeah. Oh. Oh look, he's dirty old queer. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've not- he's a new character to me. I'm quite excited. He sounds very modern and contemporary. <laughs> yeah. A new spin. Yeah. On, uh, yeah. on an old idea. Yeah. Um, just tell us a little bit more. Oh, wow, um, mm, he's an actor, isn't he? <laughs> and, right. he uh, and he likes to, uh, <laughs> take it up. Oh, mm -hmm. right, well, that's just, um, if anyone from Radio 1 is listening, and yeah. they've, uh, they've listened to Dominic Mohan in the paper, they thought, yes, you're right, we need some new blood at Radio 1. Ricky Gervais, he's got a myriad of comedy characters. Yeah. Whack, whack, oops. <laughs> I can do sound <laughs> effects. can do sound effects. So. You could probably do funny voices like Chris Moyles, couldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Not as good, but I, I mean, I can- I What about can... comedy songs like Moyles? Again, not as good, but I mean- Do you uh, remember it... when Moyles rather hilariously <laughs> changed the words of This Is My Moment by Martin McCutcheon to This Is My Motor? <laughs> we listened to it oh, though, didn't we? Unbelievable. <laughs> I remember when he was doing a competition, this was pathetic, wasn't it? We were listening to, uh, uh Radio One once when I asked why, and uh, I don't know why, we just wanted to, uh, I think it was research, wasn't it, for the office? Yeah. And, um, he was doing this, uh, he had to phone in with- We were um, listening to idiots and- <laughs> No, no, no I'm not saying that. Um, and he was doing this competition, you had to call in, with, um, some, uh, songs that are golf related. And people were throwing up going that, uh, drive the cars. He was going, drive the cars, good. And I was on that phone, I must have wasted about 40 quid, and I wanted to get to her and go, hello, Chris, it's not Milesy, Milesy, yeah. It's Derek here, Derek here, I've got one, got one. Oh, go on then, Derek, what is it? Um, something like Spandau Ballet with golfy, golfy, golf cart <laughs> and that. <laughs> and I just wanted to do that. <laughs> and I waited. And just, uh, I thought yeah. the joke's on us. Yeah. I waited on phone bill just to say something <laughs> stupid. Yeah. Oh dear. Oh. This show's better than this. Yeah, anyway, if you've got any hilarious golf related <laughs> song titles, <laughs> yeah. you'd What's like the to number? email in. What's the number? Oh, I'd like an email in. <laughs> Ricky.Gervais at exitfm.co.uk. Uh, uh, what would a song title be if perhaps we were doing something about, I don't know, air travel? Yeah. If you've got any crazy ideas, email in. We'd love to hear them. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> I've, got, I've got a thought of another golf one. Okay. You know, Duran Duran? Mm -hmm. Um, somewhere down the fairway or something, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. That's the girls the on the putting green? Yeah. Alright. Yeah. Uh, oh, hello. <laughs> hey, I've got the industry shirt. Mm. My name's Holy Fuck. My name's Holy Old Queer. <laughs> I could do all that. Ding dong. Whack whack. Oops. <laughs> oh. Elbow. Fallen Angel. See, they're the odd one out, you see, because because of what they're like and who they are and how successful they are, I can imagine saying, will you please welcome to the stage, Elbow. Indeed. But yeah. I wouldn't have. I'd have, on paper, I'd have thought that was a- A terrible band name. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know what you mean. There are exceptions to the rule. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the Boomtown Rats. Yeah. Yeah. See, I would have thought that was a. I yeah. mean, I think it is a bad name. It is a bad name. But you can't imagine it yeah. happening. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a uh, bad name. So call in if you've got email addresses and let's call in with funny <laughs> observations on life and shit. <laughs> well, it's going yeah, well. Isn't it? we That's uh, halfway through. Well, 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 Carl, what do you think? It's, it's, yeah, it's been all right. It's been all right. Yeah. We've, uh, we've covered a lot of bases. We haven't, um, we haven't taught. Taught them anything? Not taught them anything. Mm. No, I think that, I well, think... we taught them to tune into a different stage. <laughs> yeah, but... I think Heart One Hundred Six Point Two is probably picking up a few, few of our listeners as we speak. Yeah. Who's on at the moment? Don't know. Doesn't matter on there, does it? They just sort of don't slag them off. No, I'm not slagging them off. I'm just saying I don't think y you tune in because you want to hear Simply Red and that, don't you? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Well, they play other great stuff as well. <laughs> Magic is the one that I love because I only ever <laughs> listen to it in a cab. Yeah. If I'm in a mini cab. Good, that's, that, that's good. That is a good station. But Magic good is dynamite. But I know yeah. Magic, the DJs have got like five hour shifts. 
It's incredible. They're all and like, and they do read their own news. I know. It's like they, <laughs> it's like they've cut out any expenditure on that channel. Yeah. It's just <laughs> some old records. Yeah. And one guy has to go on for five hours, read his own news, his own travel. It's the, there's nothing else. I saw a bloke, st a bloke struggling once. He sort of wants to be a bit of a sort of comedian, and uh, he does one link. It's sort of one sort of fifteen second link between each record. Because it goes, that's Celine Dion. Uh, there's a story in the uh, paper again that um, people were late for work uh, on the underground because there was leaves on the track. Just wondering if uh, leaves are ever late for work because there's people on the track. <laughs> it's simply red. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless him. I swear that he's got to come up with them for like five <laughs> yeah, yeah, hours. Yeah, he's been <laughs> sweating. Uh, before I was going, I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to kill myself. Uh, yeah, it's just, almost finished. Uh, thinking, like this, thinking this story about, um, uh, war on Iraq. I imagine if, I can't do this anymore. I can't imagine if <laughs> humans would become extinct. With leaves. The dinosaurs would <laughs> kill Iraq. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh my god, look at this. Look at Carl's face when I said that. <laughs> the man moth. Yeah. They've cloned a man moth. No, but that's, that's the sort of thing I think we need now, right? We've covered a lot of stuff. What, education? What teaching, yeah. Well, okay, um, what, what do you want to know? Uh, don't know. Have you I got just, something? Can uh, you educate us on anything? I've been reading bits So could we bring back just for one, one, for one night only, educating Ricky? Oh, I'm excited. Yeah. Uh, do you think it warrants that? I don't, I don't know enough about it. You know what I mean? About what? It sounds perfect. <laughs> Play the jingle. <laughs> 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 Oh, educating Ricky! He's getting smarter! <laughs> a couple of things happened in the week that I read about. Okay. Keeping up on what's going on in that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, one was about, about that Galileo fella. Okay. Uh, was it about 1636? <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> was on. it? Was it? I think it might have been earlier. Go on. Did some stuff with light and that. If you, yeah, uh, he did lots of physical experiments, yeah. Is that it then, Carl, is it? He did, he did some stuff of, with light and that. Well, what did he do with light? What was that? Well, he did, he, well, he, uh, I think he invented the first... Telescope. Uh, yeah, telescope. So, I, I, I think it's a particular lens, though, that, that, um, and, uh, he did experiments where he dropped two, um, famously, two different, uh, weighted, uh, balls from pizza, Pisa, and, uh, they hit the ground at the same time, showing that it doesn't matter, the weight doesn't matter, but air resistance does and stuff like that. I think he probably explained it a bit better than that. Yeah, but I'm talking to Carl. Sure. But d d did they need to know He's just thinking about pizza. <laughs> yeah. Did they need to know stuff like that back then? What do you mean, did they need to know stuff like that? It's just, it's just... There weren't people going around going, I've got to drop these two things off the uh, bleeding tower of pizza, I, I just know. don't know which one's gonna land first. Yeah, I need to know. What do you need to Bring know me that? Galileo. <laughs> yeah. It's for a bet. <laughs> yeah. No, but if I was knocking about then, I'd be like, stop messing with that. We need a telly. Or <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. bet he thinks the Flintstones is real. I oh, know. Like, that'd be brilliant. That's what I'd do if I was a caveman. I'd make a telly out of rock. <laughs> yeah. And a pelican and, and a cement that I'd mixer. Just run along the room with. Ex yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, we need a car. Yeah. Well, we haven't really got the internal combustion engine. Can you stick your feet through the bottom? <laughs> yeah, just get me a car for Christ's sake. <laughs> anyway, so I learned that. And yeah. then, um. What? <laughs> he learned his name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Other people like the really? name of this week. Oh, if a chimp could watch telly. Go on, Carl, go on. And there was also a fella in the week who said, uh, that women shouldn't be wearing trousers. Why? Because they don't look good in them. Right, and who is this man and, and from what French interview? fella, French fella. Okay. <laughs> last week. Did he mean walk around naked? He just said, um, women should wear skirts rather than trousers because no woman looks good in a pair of pants. Right. How old was he? Uh, it was probably about sixty-seven. Uh huh. About that, sixty-seven, sixty-eight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wasn't happy with that. What do you think? What do you think about that? It's rubbish. Yeah. These are the only things <laughs> that have caught your eye over the last couple of weeks. This is the entire. Galileo did something with light. A French fella said women shouldn't wear trousers. See that that to me wouldn't pass as education. <laughs> it's not education. <laughs> you, I don't know where you could ever use that. I don't know when that would ever be. Applicable to I life. Ju I just like reading stuff that sort of reminds me of. Do you know what I mean? If I read it and it gets me thinking, I think that's that's a good little piece. But, but I mean, uh, but surely me, uh, sure, can't you just sort of like sit near something that vibrates to keep your brain going, or shake your head every now and again? I mean, what what does this do? You mean it makes you start using your brain? But what aspect of the a Frenchman said women shouldn't wear trousers got your mind working? What questions were you because asking? Because I thought that's, that's a bit 
That's a bit daft, isn't it? Right? Yeah. Okay, it ends there with me. <laughs> there's, nothing else, there's nowhere else for me to go on that. He closes Your mind's the gap. Your worry. Yeah, go on. What do you think? Let's go through this. Oh, I wish we could download his I thoughts. Know, I Just know. watch it. Yeah. Uh, uh, wouldn't it be great, like a DVD? Uh, like uh, a added, imagine that, uh, extra footage on the Office DVD. Yeah. Carl's oh, brain. That would be with amazing. A oh, what with a commentary. Go on. Women wearing, wearing trousers and that, right? Mm. On the estate that I grew up in. Mm. Yeah. On, on, right? Uh, there's a woman about four houses down. <laughs> right, right. Rough. <laughs> she, she's the she one who- She was or the estate. She was, right. <laughs> yeah. She's the one whose kid took a horse into the house. Yes. Right. Right. Now, we won't go over that again. No. If right. you're a new listener, I think we're covered. I think they get That's the idea. That's all you need to know. Right. Yeah. Now, she used to wear leggings. <laughs> <laughs> now, they're a bad idea. <laughs> they are a terrible idea. I agree with you there, Carl. If you're a lady of what the colour? normal were, were they, were they were, pink? No, they were sort of black, but with all bits on them. Oh, right. Do you know what I mean? What, yeah. toast and just bits. horse droppings. Yeah, go on, yeah. And she used to, um, She's quite a big woman. Sure. Pauline Quirk, I think, yeah. described well, her as. Looked like a light bulb when it she was bending It is those kind of women leggings. that are attracted to leggings. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. They are drawn to them like a moth. <laughs> <she's laughs> <sort of way. laughs> yeah, yeah. She yeah. used to wear them, and, and, and that's what I remember when I read this piece. And, <laughs> uh, she used to work on one of those sex line things. Right. Right, she used to do that. But, <laughs> <laughs> what, was she an engineer? <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> <laughs> the weird thing, the weird thing with her was, um, <laughs> She had big eyelids. <laughs> right. <laughs> Go on. That, that were too big. And this, this is what I was thinking. What, right? what, do she, what do you mean she had big eyelids? How big do eyelids have to be for you to go, they're big eyelids? <laughs> what was she shoplifting with them? Would she come out of Dixon's with like radio stored in them? What do you mean yeah, she had right, big it, eyelids? It was another one of them popular things around our way. Do you know like, What do you mean popular <laughs> things? I they think they go, they go, oh, I'll tell you what, oh, all the rage. Can I get some big eyelids, please? No, no, no. It was just like one of them things that, People suffered with just big eyelids. They could hardly open their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? That, that's one of the popular things around where I grew up. People had big eyelids. They could hardly open their eyes. What does that mean? What sort of freak town were you born in? You had webbed feet people with big heads. You got women with big eyelids. What does big eyelids mean? Are you confusing her with the horse? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did she have hooves? Look, what? Just, just too much skin. It was like the, the, the neck of a chicken, but, <laughs> but on the eyes. What's your point, anyway? So there's this big eyelided woman with the legs. And that's what I'm saying to you, though. That's when I read that story with people with trousers. Yeah, I went from that. Yeah, to into a that. woman who used to have big eyelids. Still, I still know the point. <laughs> but then, but then, and also the other bloke who had the eyelid problem was a was a mate of mine. Right. Yeah. His, his dad had it. Um, <laughs> same problem, massive, massive eyelids. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Um, um, I used to say to my mum, oh, I'm going round to, you know, Dave's house. Yeah. And, uh, or to say, Pete, well, <laughs> that's alright, but make sure his dad doesn't take you out in the car. Because he could hardly, <laughs> <laughs> he could hardly see. He had to have his head. <laughs> <laughs> he has to tilt his head back to keep his eyes open. Make sure! Did he have a couple of matches with him all, at all times? <laughs> oh. What a load of gobbledygook. Uh, so I know. This began as educating Ricky. I know, it's what, like he was people thinking, with eyelids. But it, it's like you're supposed to make that leap as well. Yeah. If I mentioned the, the trousers, Ricky will probably be thinking about people with big eyelids. <laughs> and women yeah. wearing leggings. Play a record, Carl. Got nonsense. Advert. No. No, oh, alright. Muse, time is running out on XFM 104.9. Just a couple of emails just to update you on what's coming in here. Go on. Um, Natasha has emailed us. She says that she's of Chinese origin, and at 27, she often got mistaken for 24. So your notion that Chinese people don't age well is obviously uh, factually incorrect. Yeah, well, we didn't need, uh, thank you for saying <laughs> but I mean, uh, honestly, trust us, Natasha, we didn't need you to tell us that. We what? know Carl is talking absolute nonsense. Wait till you get to 30. <laughs> 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 oh, oh dude, now this is, uh, this is quite a nice email from Paul. He says, uh, let Carl know that I have a Chinese friend called Oi. Imagine the confusing and amusing situations we're getting to. We're <laughs> <laughs> out and about in yeah. busy solo. Oi! Does <laughs> your surname come here? <laughs> Lightning wit. From, uh, from Carl. Wait till you're 30. Yeah, I know. Brilliant. I mean, 
But no, uh, actually, we've had a surprising response to, uh, Songs of Phrase this week, despite the fact that everyone has agreed that it's a race list. <laughs> <laughs> they, but nevertheless, they had a go, so, uh, keep your answers coming in, uh, Good. because we may as well. You're a hit, Carl. You're a hit. What, have we still got monkey news? Yeah, that's still coming up. I yeah. Put it on later on. Uh, we're not doing Cheeky Freak of the Week anymore. Uh, uh, we're not. <laughs> no. No? Don't want to upset people on that. Sure. But well, there is a good freaky program on <laughs> this week. Go on. I think it's on Channel 4. Yeah. Got a woman, a woman with a big head on it. No, I think it's BBC Two. Is it? Yeah. All right. Well, for unless there's for two on, because that would be a great week for you, wouldn't it? Brilliant. Won't be coming out. Is that the one when you said, "Go on, say, say, right, say what you said when you saw it." Uh, the woman with the with the head. Yeah. Just said it looks like a cartoon. <laughs> That's so mean. I don't want to discuss no, that. No, it's not. It's not mean. It is mean, Carl. Again, Steve, if we were in a restaurant and I'm arranging to meet her, and I said to the guy on the door, I I'm meeting, you know, Lisa, or whatever her name is, yeah? Right. What does he look like? Well, looks like a cartoon. <laughs> I'll be over there. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I don't think he'll, he'll get mixed up. What would That's you say about me and Steve again? If you were meeting us? Uh. No, it just starts getting nasty, doesn't it? Um, I'm meeting, uh, Carl Pilkington. Uh, we're very busy. Uh, what does he look like? Um, he looks like Charlie Brown grew up, he's got a complete little round bald head, and he's got a gormous look on his face. He's over there, mate. <laughs> yeah. All right? That's started the ball rolling for you, Carl. I love that, that it's okay to say what you like about people if you go, yeah, but if I was looking for her in a restaurant. I know, but. <laughs> yeah. And why have you arranged to go on a date with this woman? Good for now. <laughs> for her or for you? Well, I'd like to have a chat with her. Mm. You know what I mean? Just find out what worries her and... You know what I mean? Because some girls People worry like about you. things. Yeah. Like her hair being a mess and that. Yeah. You know, with her, it's like, at least your problems. <laughs> you know what I mean? Fine, alright. Well, let's move on, mate. We're not doing Cheeky Freak of the Week anymore. No. We, let's do something nice. Let's talk nicely no, no, about no, no, things. No, what's happened nice in the world, Carl? What do you like in the world? When you get up, when you go, oh, that was a brilliant day, I... dot dot dot. What do you do when you go, oh, that was brilliant? Uh. We had a game last game of snooker. You like snooker, don't you? I mean, you and Steve played snooker last week. Yeah, but things are always ruined. Do you know what I mean? I might be having a nice time having a game of snooker, mm. and then you know we're, we're having a proper battle, mm. and I'm trying to concentrate on taking a shot, and then you'll say things like, "Look, look at his little monkey hand," <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going for the black. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or, or maybe I'll say, "I'm just just going to the toilet." <laughs> And then one of you will follow me in and peer over the <laughs> over the door. Oh yeah! Tell that one. That was when you were actually in a cubicle sitting down, wasn't it? Yeah. And Steve Merchant's head appeared and went, "All right." And you went, "What if that wasn't me?" Oh, that was great. Doing, uh, doing a George Michael on me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is one of the benefits of being very tall. You can look over. You can look over the stalls. Uh, into my lavatory. <laughs> 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 it looks like a giraffe house. You're sitting down there and you look up, all right? And he's peering over the yeah. top. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh, the yeah. fun we have. Oh, it's great, isn't it? Quite anything intelligent. It's like the monkeys. Like. We are like the monkeys. Oh, we are sweet. I wanted to write a thing for the darkness. I want to write a, like the, the new monkeys. Like I want a TV to... show. Yeah. Do you want to do that? Uh, yeah, all right. Yeah, okay. Well, if they're listening, or their radio show, uh, what, a record company are listening, or their manager, big fan of the darkness, my favourite. Hey, don't make a pilot. Well, no, like no, that. no, my, my favourite band at the moment, let's, uh, we'll do a pilot. They're no, the they don't make Running around, speed it up, they can have their songs in it, they can write songs specially for us. What if they can and, and it's them, they can act, they just act themselves running round. We're getting people like Henry, M what's it, McGee and that, to come in and sort of be the actors, and, yeah. you know, all those posh actors that, that appear in Ali G and that. It sounds like a lot of hard work. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, okay, for now. <laughs> Lock on the head. Yeah, let's play Radiohead. <laughs> Radiohead and let down off OK Computer on XFM 104.9. Right, let's think of some nice stuff then. Annoyed I was yesterday. Go on. Just got off the train and, um, guy comes up to me and he says, uh, excuse me, can you spare some change? I'm, uh, I'm from Liverpool and I'm homeless. <laughs> and I was so angry, I really, it was in a bad mood anyway, and I just wanted to say to him, well, there's your mistake. <laughs> Go back to Liverpool. That's why you're homeless, you're in London. Well, he might have been homeless idiot. in Liverpool and thought, well, if, uh, why'd you come down here? Well, where would you rather be homeless? Liverpool or London? Well, Algarve. Mm. Well, no, but I mean, I'd certainly, yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah, but just, why, why is it that I'm from Liverpool and I'm homeless? Why is that supposed to be a persuading factor? 
It just annoyed me. I thought there was enough problems here already. He's going for a double sympathy, double sympathy vote. Yeah. I'm homeless <laughs> and I'm a Liverpool. He could have just said I'm from Liverpool and given him some change. <laughs> I think he was from Manchester once, I gave him a sandwich. Yeah. There's yeah. a thing the other night, right, they did this program, uh, it's only on in London, so if you're listening out of London you won't know about it, but it's about, uh, Oxford Street, mm. right? And, um... About all the thieving that goes it's on It's like stuff. thieving. Yeah. Uh, you know, drug problems yeah. in the streets and that. Yeah. Uh, you know, what gets on people's nerves, those people with the boards, mm. you know, golf sale and all that. Mm. And, um, mm. is this bit that concentrated on the homeless problem, right? And, uh, he said, you know, this fella looks after the homeless, he goes up to him and says, how are you doing? Are you hungry? You need food and that. He said, you know, a lot of people worry about the homeless, but we do try and look after them. And the Salvation Army were there, and they said, and this is where they can come if they need anything, if they need any food, or, uh, any clothes, if the, if the shoes are worn out. And he said, oh, can we have a look at that, right? So they go in this little room where all the clothes are, and they go, and there's, there's like a, a load of jumpers for them in the winter in the cold. And the camera sort of pans across. Load of ties. <laughs> <laughs> right. For the homeless. <laughs> what? Ties. The ties, ties for, for the homeless? For round, round the neck, like, to look smart. No, they use them as belts. <laughs> yeah. I've seen a lot of. Or as a leaf for their dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What are you talking about, ties? That's what they did. They said, here's the room with all the stuff in it. Right? <laughs> jumpers. <laughs> for the homeless. <laughs> jumpers. <laughs> shirts. Uh, and some uh, trainers. Uh, and you sort of load of ties. Nobody yeah. wanted one. Some evening dress. Any and they got a formal function. Any cravats. Now, where's the cummerbunds? <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking of being homeless <laughs> outside the Royal Albert Hall tonight. <laughs> yeah. That's where the real pickings are. <laughs> I'm breaking in the back door of the Savoy this evening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but dear. Another, another charity thing that I was reading about the other day that they're doing. Do they give them trainers? Because I've seen a lot of tramps with new trainers and I think there must be like a, a like a criminal soup kitchen where they get shoes because that's, that's it must be, yeah. Otherwise that's weird, isn't it? You get a, you blow any money, you, you beg all day and get a nice new pair of yeah. Nike. Yeah, no, well, don't waste it on clothes. Get some <laughs> get tennis. Some mess, yeah. Get some, yeah, special brew. That's the best value. Yeah, Go on. some smack. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. If you've got a lot of worry, you yeah. on the street. Little starter bag, little fiver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, that's weird you say that, because, <laughs> you know, a trainer's the most important thing, because, like, you know all the problems in Africa. Sure. Right? A lot, lot of problems going on there. Yeah. Uh, the other day, they're asking for people to send their spectacles <laughs> to Africa. <laughs> right. Would you be happy if you were over there and, like, you're hungry and that? <laughs> and then they say, here you go. <laughs> well, yeah, it must be for a reason. I, I don't think say, they've got bad eyes and that. Yeah, I know, but I don't think they go around. It's not like when you see those things on Live Aid and there's people dying mm. when they're putting specs on them. No, I think that's what it is. No, it's not, Carl. They sort out food mean. and medication before they put a little pair of specs on the lads. That isn't how he came across in the advert. <laughs> I think they probably walk hand in hand, you know, the people who are handing out the food are also, you know, walking alongside guys with the specs and they're handing them out as well. But what have they got to look at? <laughs> what? They don't own anything. <laughs> they'll rea they'll realise how bad everything is. God, it's rubbish here, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I try and help out the world. I've joined a little charity thing, they pay me five pounds a month. Yeah. yeah. I'm all up for helping. Yeah. Sure. But sometimes you think, what can we do? Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. What can we do? Okay, what can we do? We can't do anything. Okay. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Play a record. Uh, we were talking about the debt the other day. I was reading up on the amount of debt that South Africa are in and that. And it's just like, huh? that's without any shops. <laughs> do you know what I mean? If they had shops to spend the money on, they'd be, they'd be, they'd be murder. <laughs> that third world debt isn't because they bought too many smeg fridges from us. It's <laughs> Shopping! Look, who's been shopping? <laughs> I have. Oh, well, you've gone over the top. You're on a budget now. <laughs> yeah. You're getting nothing but grain and blankets for the next year. Because you go mental. Who's, who's, who's you just spent being... a billion quid in Dixon? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! Coming single from the Thrills, that's called Santa Cruz. On XFM 104.9. Um, we were just talking about people who do good work, you know, wandering up and down Oxford Street, giving yeah. stuff to the homeless and things. Yeah. And I was at a little, they have a little kind of music festival back in my hotel, hometown of Bristol, periodically in the summer. They can never really attract any decent acts, but, uh, you know, we support Not them anyway. Not even Portishead? Uh, no, they never turn up. No, 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 no. no.
I know. Right. I think that well this year it was Robert Plant, uh, who sang, um, lots of old blues covers, and people were quite bored until he played Whole Lot of Love at the end, and then we sort of went, really? You should have done all the old Led Zeppelin, <laughs> stop playing all this other nonsense we're not interested in. <laughs> so I was set this for exactly, next time. Yeah. Robert, 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 no, 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 <laughs> yeah. no, no. But, um, I just uh, snuck off into the woods for, you know, a waz. Because I'm quite rock and roll like that. And I was passing, and these are a group of people, and I've always thought they never get enough praise, enough credit, and I genuinely, and I mean this with they, entirely sincerely, I really do. I don't mean to be, I'm not taking the lick at all. But the St. John's Ambulance people, they're absolutely blinding because they are, they all look like nerds. I mean, they all look like kind of, because they're normally kind of fat women or kind of, or kind of well, blokes. I think, doing, I think you're doing very well for their, um, their new recruitment campaign. Well, so, I was well, going to say, I think no, you're selling it to people who This want is to join. my point, Rick, is that they've not changed the uniforms in like 40 years. It is normally, <laughs> yeah, it's normally the kind of, the nerds from your school who went into yeah. it or whatever. It's kind of old people. I saw them, they were all sat around in this little area. No one was, you know, nobody was just sat around, they were bored, they weren't really enjoying the music. And I thought, look at that, they're not, that fat kid of I want- I thought he'd have liked my mate, I said, see that fat one over there, in the uniform. With the glasses and the hairbrush forward. With the glasses, hairbrush forward, yeah. the kind of blue navy jumper. Satchel. There's a little satchel yeah. there, yeah. yeah. He is never gonna get off with a girl, probably until he's like 30. And yeah, even then he's- It gets to loose some clothes. And even then it's cause he's, cause he's giving mouth to mouth <laughs> to her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, and I thought, he's never gonna get anything, and I'll tell you this, all these trendy young girls walking around in their, in their, in their kind of, you know, cool summer gear, in their trendy tie-dye and the like, I'll tell you, when one of them, you know, take something that's a little bit dodgy that they bought off some guy with dreads, right? And then they're desperate for him and they zip in there, oh quick, quick, my friend's, you know, passing out, she's had something, she's had a funny turn, and he's straight there with his water and his medication, oh yeah, they need him then, but he doesn't get any action the rest of the time. You know, she's human, that's what annoyed me about I thought, they're doing a bloody good job, they turn up at sports events, at festivals, no one gives them the time of day, you never hear any good praise about them, and they're there, sat there, Steve, hot or cold. tell me the truth now, did you join the St John's Ambulance last week to get some birds? Got no action. <laughs> really? Oh, I had no action, and I've been passing some dodgy <laughs> ease around all the festivals. <laughs> By the way, your dreads are awful. <laughs> you, can, you can see they're fake. They're made like, out of newspaper. They're awful. You really do look an idiot. But seriously, I'm all joking aside. I genuinely wanted to give some massive props. <laughs> 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 if I could give some big ups to the St. John's people, because I genuinely, without any joke, and I genuinely think they do a brilliant job. Could I just say how good I think the Salvation Army are? Because you see those elderly ladies with surgical supports. A lot of them mm -hmm. all look like Thor Heard. Yep. Um, well, that's a prerequisite to get into that super army. And they play that bloody tambourine, rain or shine, <laughs> yeah. and they are just, all they're trying to do is, you know, save you from burning in hell. <laughs> and they don't get any respect. Have the Salvation Army, do they, like, would they have to get called off? Yeah, they'd be, <laughs> if we, if yeah, they, 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 they'd be the Gurkhas first, then all the regulars, then the TAs, I think then, uh, it's, I think then it's sort of like police. Lifeguards. Lifeguards, like yeah, but down to, down to, I think, AA, and then it's the Salvation Army. <laughs> right. We send the Salvation Army, obviously, if, if you know, we really have we lost a lot of yeah. casualties, sure. you know, and uh, they're, they're the last to go. Yeah, but they are so, all highly trained, aren't they? All those old women, yeah. they can kill a man. Yeah. With yeah. a single blow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, good, good, good to them, good to John's Ambulance, good to, uh, Salvation Army, you know, big up. But I think we should just, you know, if I might introduce a new feature every week, let's just give some props, let's just give some massive to respect to someone who doesn't get enough respect. Yeah. Um, who doesn't get enough respect? Uh, who's done a blinding job? Um, Mother Teresa, she's, she's gone though, she's yeah, gone, she won't uh, be listening anyway. Uh, who's the best person that there is? <laughs> who's the best person that there is? Um, I'll tell you what, we're gonna, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna call, um, uh, Either Carol Vorderman or um, Esther Anson, and say who's the best one you've ever met that you know did so much. Yeah. All right. And we'll and we'll get heap praise upon them next week. Yeah. Great. Mm. What? I just don't don't like you know. They know they know they're doing a good job. Right. If I did that job, I want a pat on the back. You uh, wouldn't need a pat on the back. And people are starting to you know it's like Carol Vorderman. I like her. She's all right. She does a good job. But now that better homes, they only tend to turn up at people who have had problems. Do you know what I mean? Right. Well, well leave, leave it, leave it, okay, okay. Look, 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 wait, 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 go on, what do you mean? No, it's, it used to start off and it's like- I haven't seen better homes, what is better uh, homes? It's, they, they go around and do someone's house up. Right. Do you know what I mean? But then, they get, they get a bit of bad news, and Carol thinks, I'll cheer them up, I'll give them a new kitchen. Yeah. And it, it annoys me because if you haven't had bad news, it doesn't mean you're not worth a new kitchen. Did you, you send in an application? <laughs> What's yeah. Yeah. They say that I'm, I'm bald, I'm from Manchester. Well, um, if you'd written that, they'd have rushed round. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean? What they they say? So and so's had a, a bad 
year his mum died, he lost his leg, um, and all he's ever wanted is a chaise long and a uh, hostess trolley. <laughs> and the annoying thing is, right, they <laughs> might not be the ones who write in, it might be a neighbour. Yeah. But they also get something sorted out for them. Really? So even though the neighbours had a bit of bad news, they go, I'll cash in on this one, I'll send a letter into old Carol, tell her that, uh, you know, mum's passed away, yeah. Yeah. I'll get a new, uh, conservatory sorted. Sure. And sometimes a neighbour gets a better deal <laughs> than the person who, do you know what I mean, the person who's had a bit of bad news yeah. gets like a new little kitchen, whatever. <laughs> Neighbour next door. Leave the kitchen. Let it go, Carl. New, new decking in the You had to pay for your own kitchen. Uh, you know what I mean, though? No. Is yeah, it all the kitchen, kitchen sorted, the bathroom these days. You had trouble with the grouting, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Oh, no, we have got to, we've got to do, oh, look, play a record, we've got to do the results. And then we've got to do monkey news. Could we quickly do the results? Yeah, well, you say we've got to do the results. There's not people hanging on for them. Let's <laughs> <laughs> do it, and just knock it out there before we're Well, let's play a tune, let's come back and do it. Eddie the Hot Rods, yeah, surely. Eddie and the Hot Rods, do anything you want to do. That's uplifting, isn't it? Oh. Oh, the drumming. Brilliant. Takes me back, all the way back to 1978 on XFM 104.9. What were you doing? What were you doing? What are your memories? I was actually probably dancing around miming the drums to that in my bedroom. In fact, were I remember- you mute? Were you mute? Uh, no, no. I remember I think I had that what one on a what single, but I'd got it from an old jukebox, so it didn't have a middle. Sure. Right? I think they're called dinked, right? And so I had to line it up really carefully, and sometimes by the end it would just slightly go out where the record was moving, mm. where I just had to- Interesting anecdote there. <laughs> Fascinating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah. lovely insight. Since you were asking me mate. what I was doing 25 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Carl, quick, the results then monkey news. I need some monkey news, but I need the results first. Right, right. play it again and give the answers. Here we go. Songs of phrase. Songs of phrase. Name what? the artist. Name the artist. I know you're just 16, but look at all of you. Oh, you and cry. That's... Oh, first Philip Bailey again. That's too little. Right, it was- That was uh, Rockset. The look. Yeah, yeah. Right, we had, uh, You and Cry started yeah. it off. Yeah. Uh, 16. That was Dean Martin. Because- Oh, yeah. Jane- Jane's Addiction. addiction yeah. Because- Ch Cars. Yeah. Chinese Philip Bailey. Uh, Philip Bailey, that's second out in his ad. Uh, last one, uh, we used him for Chinese, <laughs> where there's a hairy Chinese kid. He's never got so many royalties being used <laughs> in racist uh, game shows. Brilliant. Then Rockset and finishing with George Michael. Oh, yeah. Right. So, brilliant. Not, right. Who's the winner? Well, the winner, actually, uh, it looks to me like he's got all of them here, uh, from Bognor Regis. It's Stuart Birch. Well done, Stuart. And you get that bag, bag of tat. Bognor uh, Regis. Yep. Oh. Just need his address. back as well. Yeah, um, if you don't, just email in your address, uh, Stuart, and you can have those goodies. If you're not interested, don't bother. Steve. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. Okay, monkey related news from Carl Pilkington. Right. Uh, do you know the monkey that went into space? Yeah. Yep. It happened in 1958. Right. Now you know that. Yeah. Yes. What did he do next? What, what, what did the monkey do next? Yeah. One appearance on uh, Celebrity Squares and it was like forgotten. Right. Uh, yeah, cut a no novelty record. Yeah. Well, just like Rick Waller. I'll tell you what happened. He, uh, <laughs> he got back and all that. <laughs> he got back. <laughs> Heroes welcome. NASA sort of said, you know, you did a good job. <laughs> And that's where a lot of people think, think, you know, it all ended. Sure. Yeah. But NASA were like, well, hang on a minute. He's spent he's a trained. lot of time, we've trained him up and stuff. So he's like, you know, he's saying, sure, sure, you know, I've learned a lot, I've still got it all, I've kept it all, I know what to do. So they said, right, we'll use you. So he turned into like a bit of a trainer at NASA. <laughs> we both have seen you on the top of an organ. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Can> <laughs> you, on this little bellhop out there. <laughs> Could you smoke fags? <laughs> yeah. I'll have a go. So he was, they were getting in new monkeys. You know, the, the main man at NASA was saying, can you teach you the same? He's going, of course I can. Do you know what I mean? I remember it all, I know what's going on, I'll tell him what buttons to press, what to do in emergencies, that sort of thing. Um, it was technically sort of employed by the army. Right, can, can I just, can I just fit in here? I, I, I don't know the story, Carl, and I, I might embarrass myself here, you've got an army of people out there that have probably sent me uh, an equally, um, deranged email from a different website, but I'm pretty sure when they sent the monkey into space, it was to monitor his physiology. He didn't, he didn't <laughs> press any buttons or learn to dock or take off. It just, it was just the effects of weightlessness and space on, um, basically a primate. I'm pretty sure he was tied in with electrodes to mm. his head. Mm. So, yeah. 
Well, yeah, I'm pretty sure. No, I people, prove, but on. even if that were the case, and he had learned to press one or two very basic buttons. Definitely not. Definitely but not. But even if it were the no, case, I'm pretty not. certain they wouldn't have brought him back to train up Neil Armstrong. <laughs> <laughs> right, definitely. Go, but go on. Going, Neil, what are you going to say when you come out there? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Well, I was thinking of just saying, I know I'm on the middle. Hello, I always <laughs> made a cheese. Don't say that. <laughs> what say about, that? I've noticed that you got little legs, yeah. right? But mankind stepped forward. Well, how could I put that? I was just going to say, I know I'm on the moon, it's great to be no, here. Wish you no, were here. I've got things out there, man. Yeah, go on. Anyway, basically, he got back. They sorted him out with a nice pension. He mm. was happy. Um, because of, like, the rank that he got, he, he, he was like, you know, he had loads of, uh, medals and stuff. He said, right, we'll make him a colonel. He got that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. like I say, he got a pension. Um, that was the end. He died in 1969. He was ba uh, buried with his wife. He passed away. <laughs> his wife? I'm sure, I'm sure it just goes onto a different website. <laughs> yeah. About something completely different. And yeah, you're like, talking about Buzz Aldrin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. His page is missing. Oh, dear. So. Well, that, w Carl, I'm, like, if someone could call in, did they train Lyca the dog to sort of like, you know, dock and re-entry? Yeah, they didn't bother. They didn't, bother. They didn't, bother. They didn't even bother. They didn't bother bringing him back. They just sent him up there and uh, they didn't have to bring him back and they just went, yeah, that's that. That's brilliant. Well, I can do that. Yeah. Uh, uh, Amazing. Really? Yeah. What do you think of that, Carl? Rubbish, innit? Sort of brought it down a bit. <laughs> <laughs> but the little monkey made a colonel. Hero. Big hero. What was he in? What craft was he in? Uh, Sputnik. Hang on a minute. He was in, um, Jupiter AM. Yeah. Let me see that piece of paper. Yeah, I, I, I can guarantee there's nothing there about his, his training other than Let's hope he's not sick on the control panel when we shoot him up at <laughs> 400 Gs. <laughs> oh, dear. What? What's I love the fact that you think that this monkey was a high- <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Do, do you, when, when you think of these things that are listening to monkey's face, do you think of the planet of the apes? Like they're sort of talking sort of chimps and gorillas and they're, they're in tunics on the horseback <laughs> with snub-nosed rifles. <laughs> what do you think of? Just a little monkey getting on with it. <laughs> He knows his job, he knows what he's got to do to get somewhere. <laughs> Look, he's pressed the button. What's he pressed the button? This takes me back. Do you remember 1965, I think it was? We're going to use him to train other DJs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's it then. Goodbye. Thanks. Well, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Carl's all a little bit, I don't know, he's a bit frustrated, he's sort of a bit sweaty and fed up today, aren't you, because of the heat. It's too much though, isn't it? He's taken it out, he, was sort of, he wanted to fight, you know he doesn't use like a fight, I sort of like lead on him and try and rub his head. Yeah. But today he was he was sort of leading it, he was sort of like getting a little bit, uh, if I didn't know better, I would have said it was sexual frustration. Well I was like watching, you, Rick, if you don't want me saying I was watching, not in that way, just watching It was sort of like he was going, oh I want to hit you, and yeah. I was thinking, does he want to hit me or does he want to do something else to me? Exactly. What were your thoughts, Carl? Exactly. I mean, I saw him sort of wrestling with you on the floor and you clearly weren't enjoying it, but he was really Yeah, what was it. that going on? What, what's the change? Why are you suddenly sort of... Well, uh, what, 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 what are you trying to say? No, I'm not. I'm just saying it was weird that you suddenly, it was like you were, all. Oh, you're saying know. that a bit, sort of a bit gay? No. Is that what you're saying? No, but what was... Suzanne accused me of that in the week. Why? For being a bit gay. She said, I'm sure you're gay. Why? Just because I was moaning about stuff. She said, oh, you're a drama queen. <laughs> 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 right, well that's, oh, that's what, what were you moaning about? <sighs> Not just, having enough gay sex? No. Just, she, just, th uh, th she didn't have a knob. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's going, oh, why don't you oh. get yourself a nice little knob? Yeah. I mean, can I call you a Frank? <laughs> Could you wear this false beard? Yeah. It's yeah. just, um, well we'll talk about it later, it was about the seven wonders. I just wasn't that impressed. He <laughs> said, he said, he said, uh, <laughs> well, we'd say that, yeah, well, we got a good top show That's coming up, haven't we? But if you are a little bit, kind of, just a little bit sexually, you know, don't be afraid to, to let it out. I mean, if you want us to relieve you of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, let's have a little bit of Maggie Mae by oh, Rod. Oh, some beautiful oh, day. Like killing a Georgie. Um, that's your favourite song, isn't it? Oh. That's we weird, are. isn't it? Strange, isn't it? That's weird. I, 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 I'd like to hear Rod Stewart singing about a lovely lady, please, Carl. As would I. <laughs> you can picture whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> Rod. Maggie.
Maggie May on XFM 104.9. On the device with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Steve. Well, I, I've only just read about this and I'm quite- I don't know anything about it. This naked rambler, Steve Goff. Yeah. Uh, is he doing some kind of- he's doing a walk from Land's End to John O'Groats. Is he completely nude? Yeah, he's been arrested ten times on the way, apparently. Right. It says here that Nora Goff, his mum, <laughs> she's in her seventies, she's begged her son not to walk naked from Land's End uh, to John O'Groats. She said, I don't know where he gets this from. Certainly not me. I am and have always been quite conservative. He would never have been allowed to walk around the house without covering himself up. I wouldn't go as far as to say I'm ashamed of him, but I do not approve of what he is doing. Having said that, it's good to see him on the telly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it must be. It's not about anything. It's lovely. It's not embarrassing until they're famous with exactly. it. However, however embarrassing yeah. it is. But, um, well, son, I can't believe my son's a serial killer. Nice to see him on the telly. <laughs> it's it. Well, it's he looks like one. He's not, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean. What is he doing? I don't Steve understand. Steve wouldn't say he was, and he's not. He's no. just a rambler. Just, uh, but he's there, right? What's his, what's his motivation? He's just walking to, I don't know, just, it's just a nudist, I suppose. Right. And there's a picture in there, and, uh, Carl looked at it and he went, oh. What's the point of that? He went, well, look at him. He's got shoes and socks on. He's got a rucksack on. He's got a hat on. He's not nude. He's just got his knob out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I bet he's got a full beard thinking, oh, I want to hide some skin. <laughs> yeah, Whereas yeah. this little chap <laughs> needs the air. Yeah. I'll pop him out all the time I can. Yeah, no, they, they, they really annoy me. Because it's in the, in the supplement today as well, with the, with the mirror, right? And they've done, uh, <laughs> done a bit about nudists and that. Yeah. Again. Um... <laughs> Same problems all the time. <laughs> Go on. Um, there's like an old fella sat there, just uh, How do you know he's old? Well... <laughs> <laughs> Why are you looking, Carl? Why are you look yeah. looking at his face, aren't you, presumably? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just saying he's old and he's sat there smoking a pipe. Sure. With yeah. his sandals on. Yeah. Yeah. They're quite normal, just with his, his knob out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but look, he always made the same mistake. He's got a little white deck chair. Yeah. Yeah. If you're nudist, don't go, don't go for white. Why? Just sitting on that, getting a bit clammy and stuff. Ah, the f <laughs> white. Don't go for white. <laughs> go for darker colours. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. No, do I? But I love it. I love the fact that he's just got loads of pictures of naked men. Yeah. Walking around <laughs> with loads of pictures. I'm just of saying, a d dirty ass on that. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've discussed the news before. Though. I don't understand the impulse at all. I don't. I do find it bizarre. I mean, there's a picture there of three uh, men nude in a pub. Yeah. I d just having a chat. Yeah. <laughs> just having a chat. Oh, look at Carl Carey. But what's those the? Pictures. I mean, oh, okay, fair enough. Walking around outside, but indoors, in a pub, nude. Well, it must be a nudist on a pub. Pair of that, that must be a nudist holiday, I assume, yeah. as opposed to like the local. There uh, is though, isn't there? There's a there was a thing in Bizarre magazine the other week where. Sure. There was a, a picture of some people, uh, they've got an airline of their own now. What, nudists? Nudes. Nude airline? So you just, you can get on there. <laughs> you already start as soon as you get on. Sure. And, uh, but what's the point? Well, I'd be worried just about banging against things. <laughs> you know. So to speak. Yeah, my shoes and things. Or spilling the hot co when the waitress comes along. What, the air hostess, and why she spilled hot coffee? Yeah, that's a good point. I Would she have that. to be nude? Would the stewardesses have to be I nude? I don't know. But that bit as well where they walk down the aisle and they have to check if you've buckled up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's like, excuse me miss, can you just... Yeah, and over fifties, it's always over fifties. Right, yeah. So it'd be an old woman on the plane. Yeah, yeah. She'd be like, can you just lift your left <laughs> kit up so I can see the belt? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, God! Oh, dear. Imagine if you've got to go into the crash position. Oh, God, yeah. You know? <laughs> the last thing you see is your John Thomas. <laughs> John Thomas. As you, go, as you go crashing into a mountain. Terrifying. And then what if you've got an abandoned ship? I yeah. know. Well, uh, how would they explain that? Yeah. Get onto an island. <laughs> exactly. All right. Or being picked up by, you know, a passing ship. <laughs> yeah. Carl, you notice they also play volleyball a lot, don't yeah, they? Yeah, I mean, you've always mentioned that, but yeah. I thought you were joking, but they love it. Yeah. <laughs> they've said, they said, that's what they do. They get to this special holiday that camp. That can only be, either they got the idea from sort of like Carry On Camping yeah. or Benny Hill, or they actually like it jiggling around as yeah. much as possible. Yeah. But is that safe? Well, I assume so. You play volleyball with trousers on, don't you? I wouldn't have thought- Yeah, but there's a bit of, uh, like, support there. <laughs> I mean, I was watching, um, <laughs> Athletics, right? Mm. The other week. Yeah. Right? yeah. And uh, I was watching it because there's a lad who, who I went to school with. He's like winning gold medals and everything now right, in the right, Olympics right, and right. stuff, right? So I was looking out for him. Uh, 
No, if you went to school with him, I'm assuming he's got three legs or something? No, no, he's, he's not. He's just a regular guy. He used to push me on, uh, on my go-kart, and sure. that, so I feel like I've- You've trained I was him, there yeah, from the, the start, beginning. training him up a bit. Yeah. And, uh, watching the program, and there was swimming in it, and, uh, I was watching that for a bit, getting a bit annoyed, cause- But- that butterfly stroke- Yeah. I don't- I don't know why they do that. No, nor do I. It's just hard work. It doesn't make you go any faster than, let's say, the- that, crawl. that stroke. The the crawl. Yeah, don't do that. Uh, that stroke on radio doesn't work. The crawl, yeah. So, uh, I was watching that thing, uh, that's- that's annoying. Yeah. And then they got on to the running bit, <laughs> and, uh, my mate's in this race. Yeah. Now, they do the side shot, don't they? So you can see who's in the lead. Sure. And then they do that front shot. Where it's absolutely pointless. The only reason to do the front shot, I I think, is to keep women interested, <laughs> because you can basically see his tackle going from left to right, <laughs> being battered all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Why were you looking? Seriously, you had no choice. If you wanted to watch it, it was like I was interested if he was going to win, but it's like, you know. But what, why did you turn over and watch Charlie's Angels instead? Because I wanted to see if he won the race. Or flip back at the end. Just flip back to get the result if you don't- well, yeah. Or at least turn away or close your eyes well, well, on the front it. shot. No, I wasn't- I, I just- it's Suzanne weird. was happy, Suzanne was loving it. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Just go to the other shot, but they were showing you the front shot. You're <laughs> running along there. They could have just shown the top half, but they didn't. Sure. It was there. <laughs> There's his heads moving along at 25 miles an hour. Yeah. Well, I think you're meant to see the running, the actual legs moving. It's an athletics coverage, isn't it? It's not like... But they don't show you a shot from behind. Did you want that? Oh, no, I didn't want that either. <laughs> 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 it sounds record. like you were disappointed. Yeah. Play a record. What are we having? Play a radio ad? Yeah, it'd be brilliant, wouldn't it? Yeah. Incidentally, last week, you remember, we began the show by talking about knobs. Yeah. I think we've got a bit more knob news this week. Knob is going up, is it? <laughs> knob news is After on the way. After Radiohead. More cock. <laughs> Radiohead and go to sleep. That's not to you. Please don't go to sleep. We've got another <laughs> hour and 35 minutes of fun chat and great, great music on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Pilkey, little K-man Pilkers, little baldy twat mank whinging, a little bit bent Pilkers. <laughs> there he is. There he is there. Now, Rick, you may remember that last week we opened with, um, some quality, uh, knob news. Knob news, yeah. Uh, it was, uh, it was, um... Hitler's, Hitler, um, uh, Hitler's knob. <laughs> Hitler's knob was one of them. That just, that just sparked <laughs> off into a whole, a whole bunch of other yeah, kind yeah. of knob-related discussions. Yeah. And I'm pleased so far to see that we're almost at the halfway mark, uh, for this first hour, and so far we've only talked about nudity and or Todgers. Yeah. So, excellent work from us. Well done, lads. Yeah. I'm looking forward to Dr. Fox and the rest of the Sony, uh, award <laughs> committee listening to this one. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, more knob news. I don't know if there's Go a jingle on. for that, maybe. Uh, oh, you nearly had the eye out! Knob news! Knob news, excellent. This is uh, an extraordinary story. Um, a woman tried to sue her bosses for £210,000 after finding a cooked penis in a canteen stew. Hospital cleaner Sophie, something, 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 I don't, can't quite pronounce that name, was eating goulash for lunch and could not cut one of the lumps of meat. <laughs> oh, you can see where it's going. I've got so many questions already. I know. She picked it up and tried to chew it, but it was too tough. Then she inspected it with workmates, who all agreed it was a penis. <laughs> Imagine that discussion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Miss McLatter said she vomited for the rest of the day, instantly became a vegetarian, <laughs> <laughs> and had to have psychiatric help. It's not known whether the organ was from a human. The case continues. Well, it can be found out, so that's one thing. Obviously, the doctors aren't confused. They're not going, I don't know, I've never seen one like it. Yeah. Uh, also, why is she in goulash? <laughs> I know. I mean, that is my first question. Why? <laughs> it, yeah. You got your, uh, oh, lunch, oh, what do you want? Oh, I fancy some goulash. <laughs> yeah. Oh, some gooly lash. Gooly lash, Thanks like it. indeed. Lancashire cockpot. <laughs> oh, Is brilliant. on the menu. Brilliant. Only five pounds fifty. Uh, um, w uh, wangers and mash. I'd love some wangers and mash, please. If you've got any knob-related puns, Knob food related puns and call XFM on 3426 <laughs> 14094. Ricky at xfm dot co dot uk. Call Chris Miles at radio one dot xfm dot <laughs> Yeah. Cock Uh Cock a van. It's already done for There's you. There's some there's wangs and mice, cocker van, Lancashire cockpot. Uh you know. <laughs> That's just off the top of our brains. Yeah. So if so you've got any you of your own, keep them to yourself, we're not interested. What do you make of that uh knob news? And he's in a hospital. 
I don't think so. No, oh, yes, it was a hospital cleaner. cleaner. You're right. Oh, cleaner. God. I know what your mind's thinking already. There's been a mix up. <laughs> <laughs> What kind of mix-up? I love that. What, some bloke's gone in, some lesbian's gone in, what a sex change, she's got a carrot for a <laughs> yeah, cock. What June steak. June <laughs> 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 steak. <laughs> oh, that would be great. You're not, you're not a doctor, you butcher. It's there, not funny. There is some, uh, some other news, uh, whilst we're doing the knob news, uh, <laughs> <laughs> just cram this one in. Um, there was some story on some news website about some lad who, uh, wasn't happy with what, what, what he'd been given. Right. What do you mean? He had a, he had an op? No, no, uh, no, he wanted to have an op. He wasn't um, happy with what God had given him. Yeah. Yeah. The look what the Lord had popped <laughs> downstairs for him. <laughs> sure. And, uh... Sorry, no, wait a minute, was he a bloke who wanted it? Yeah, a fella, yeah, a fella. And he what, he wanted a, he, what, he didn't want a knob, or he wanted a bigger knob? He wanted a bigger one. Right, okay. And, okay. uh, cost five grand. Right. Um, and they made a mess of it. Well, what do they, how, how do they make a mess of it? Don't know, it, it came out <laughs> smaller than they went in with. Well, no, what do you mean? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know all the ins and outs. Oh, God. It's just well, like he, borrowed, a, he borrowed the money off his mum. There's been a slight mix up. <laughs> he borrowed the money off his mum? I love that. <laughs> How bad is that? What do you want for your birthday, son? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Interesting. Thanks, Mum, for asking. A couple of bits of news as well. Hello, Doctor. How did it go? Um, well, well, firstly, don't look under the bandages and don't have the goulash for lunch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God. It, it was smaller than you went Mum, we got five grand. Why? Just gonna fuck with up. <laughs> tell me what it's for. <laughs> you can have it. You tell me what it's for. Well, look at that. Oh, you need a bigger one. Yeah, definitely. There's the money. <laughs> yeah. On you go. Nothing can go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say to the doctor then? That's rubbish. I didn't read all the ins and outs, I just, like I said, I saw just it. Just look for the picture. <laughs> they weren't a picture. <laughs> <laughs> but you just thought, uh, well thanks for it, you just thought you'd pop that one in. Thanks. Yeah, that's the, that's the end, uh, yeah. Nob News Extra. Yeah. Play record, Carl. Mm -hmm. So if you've got any Nob News, um, we've got one more show left. Send that to ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk and we'll hopefully get that Nob News on air next week. Yeah. Alright. Yeah. Some Dizzy Rascal? Oh, Dizzy Rascal, yeah, he's one of the hot new English rappers. Let's play it. Oh. Loosen your hold. South. That's great, and I love that one. On XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Good Carl, choice, Good choice, Carl cheers, 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 cheers. What are you thinking, Carl? What have you been doing this week? It's been going on. Yeah. Uh, You'd be miserable miserable because of the heat, obviously. That's getting me down. Yeah. Uh, it's just the way people wander about as well with next and out on. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm always amazed by, uh, the men, because there's a certain breed of man, uh, sometimes it's kind of builders, mechanics, taxi drivers, van drivers, but not necessarily, students, all sorts of guys, and you also watch them walking down the street, they'll be walking down the street, girls, you know, we'll see in their sort of summer gear, and it's literally, you know, eyes, you know, look at those legs, oh, knockers, oh, I can't believe my luck, oh, you know, and they're sort of talking to their mates, they're checking it, oh, it's an arse, I can't believe it, oh, yeah. and it's like, <laughs> it's like they sort of forget, there's like some kind of amnesia that sweeps over them during the, the winter like months. Like it's a surprise. Yeah, and then it's like, every time summer rolls around again, and girls pop, they just, I can't believe it, where have they been? They're back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And they get so excited. Oh, excuse me now, but you had tits under there all winter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. Uh, Bloody hell. Oh, brilliant. brilliant. It's great to see him again. <laughs> yeah. And then he gets, <laughs> us, he gets us sort of October and they go, where they gone? Where <laughs> they happened? just don't say anything. They just like, get on with it. They, <laughs> exactly. They're reminded. Yeah. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> yeah. They completely forget. <laughs> yeah. For a sort of half the year. <laughs> uh, there was a fellow this morning, I just nipped out, having a cup of tea, reading the paper, reading that bit about nudists and that. Sure. And, uh, little old fella. Must have been... Seventy-five. Okay. Walks past. Shoe socks. Sort of shorts, but because he's old, I don't think he's got like a normal pair of shorts. So we're like suit pants, but short. <laughs> <laughs> so really smart shorts <laughs> I've never seen before. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But the thing is, with, with him being old and thin, yeah, it's just don't do that. Don't walk around. Like what that. the legs? Put, the legs in the back. He looked like a little tortoise without his shell on. <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted to see a tortoise without its shell on, yeah. just to see if it would run really fast and go, this is brilliant. Just yeah. scamper along. I saw a grotesque thing. I saw, I think it's Britain's fattest man. I'm not sure. Mm. He was huge. I mean, I don't wish him any ill, but so big. It was ludicrous. He was waddling down, um, Oxford Street and he was, I mean, genuinely, you know, I, I'm not a big fan of you know, ginormous mm. people. Rick Waller, for instance, yeah. turns my stomach. This guy was twice <laughs> as big. He was extraordinary. And he sat down on a big bench and literally took up the whole space. 
and he, he reached into his bag, he's having his lunch, and he was eating an apple. <laughs> and I really felt like I wanted to slap him on the back and go, it's a bit late for that, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's probably starting now, he's probably starting thinking that I'm gonna make a change. And imagine if you'd have said that. Yeah. And he'd have, it'd have been awful, wouldn't it? Yeah. He took, he, he cut it in half, put it between two slices of chocolate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, and I waited, don't know how you get and that. And waited for a pig to come past, yeah. shoved it in his mouth. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just swallowed it all. I don't oh. know how he gets that big. And he was like, he'd come out to sort of soak up some of the sun. You know. Well, you look better with the tan. <laughs> I suppose so. Yeah. Yeah. Was he wearing loose black clothes? <laughs> he was, of course that, he was wearing That loose works black up clothes. to a point. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> then, you know, yeah. there's, there's, there, it's not falling anywhere. It's like vertical stripes. Yeah. To make it look <laughs> yeah. thinner. Just people just walk past and think it's night. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> it. <Exactly. laughs> so, Carl. So, little... yeah, so, so that's, that's, you know, that's been annoying me with the weather and that. Yeah. And then, uh. I love the warm weather. Oh. Although I can't sleep at night, I had, a, I had two hours in front, just went and lay down in front of the window, in front of the French window, just because it was just too hot last night. But if I can sleep, I love hot weather, I love walking around when it's sunny. It's better for you. People are usually happier in hot weather. <laughs> the sun is good for you. I mean, it, it has been hot, I mean, it's 100 degrees, it's probably too hot to work, but... Mental, I can't, I can't think straight and stuff. But you know your little baldy head, isn't it bad for it? Because it just... Doesn't it get you, make, make your brain a little bit hot? Well, <laughs> I... I mean... I'm just got my head on show. What about the nudists? <laughs> <laughs> worry about them before you worry about me. <laughs> right? Well, another another thing that happened in the week. Um, you know, I've just had builders round, so in the kitchen out. Yeah, that. sure. Uh, so virtually skint. But another problem happens. Boiler starts playing up. Right. Right. So uh, and you've got to have a shower in this weather. You've got to, you've got to be able to have a shower on that and freshen off and what have you. Wow. Well. I have a shower every day anyway. I mean, two yeah. sometimes, but yeah. Yeah, but yeah. if you haven't got any hot water, you can't, can you? Uh, right? Cold shower's all right, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Go on. So anyway, so, uh, fella comes round. Yeah. Ninety quid. Ninety quid? Ninety quid. Um, all he did, turns up, says, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, just bang it. Just ninety bang quid. The, bang the boiler. That's <laughs> ninety quid. <laughs> Last time I banged a boiler, it cost me ninety quid. <laughs> and there was a there was a lot of leakage then. <laughs> yeah. So I, I you know well, I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. yeah. I do sympathise. <laughs> but do you know, like I I catch them out as well. Do you know, like you know, I know they're they're up to no good yeah. and stuff. They don't earn the money. Sure. And he was in the bathroom, so I sort of creep up and I try and stick my head round the door to see what he's. What up when they broke in the bathroom? <laughs> right. It's weird, weird, isn't it? So you creep up to a man in the bathroom and put your head round without seeing you. Go on, though. Fair enough. Right, do you want to go over what happened that time when we were in the pub and I go to the toilet and you're trying to get in? <laughs> what happened? Is that normal? Go on, what happened? Go on, I'm not, go on, I'm not ashamed. What happened? <laughs> go on, go on, go on, say it. <laughs> say it. What happened? <laughs> well, don't start a story and then don't finish no, it. Or we'll do it later. <laughs> Tell he, us was, he was in the he was in the cubicle and he got in the cubicle to have a piss to avoid me annoying him, right? So what I did, I got some of that liquid stone and I just put it over and squirted on him. And he came out going, "Look, it looks like someone's just effing jizz on me. I've got effing jizz on me back." I, <laughs> I had to walk through Soho without me back. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I was walking to Soho and wh when was it we had to go to the? Uh, we went to the Ivy with those people. Uh, Wednesday. Or something like that, yeah. We had a business meeting, right? right? And, uh, well, I, what, I was, we were walking around the Ivy, it was about half eleven, and I was going down Old Compton Street, and as I got to just going past Mamma Mia, something hit me on the shoulder. I looked down, and obviously it was bird shit, but just for, for, just for a split second, I thought it looked like jizz. And I was, I just thought, oh God, because, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I sort of woke up and I thought, right, I went, I got to wash my hands and like get in. It was, obviously wasn't jizz. It was just, it was pigeon shit or something, right? But I, I had this pamphlet once when I was at Ulu. Terence Higgins Trust left this pamphlet and it was all stuff like safe sex and it was stuff like, <laughs> it, honestly, I swear, it said things like, you don't have to have four. <laughs> <laughs> in the course, it said you can do lots of other things with your lover, like <laughs> it said, like um, like come into some fruit, e.g., a melon. It, it, it says um, with friends, um, just come on the back of one of them, right? And then this is the bit that made me think, and I thought, oh my god, when I looked down, sort of on my shoulder, it says, <laughs> come out of a window. <laughs> 
<laughs> on any passing celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Oh, oh I'll get that pamphlet. If anyone's got that pamphlet, it was brilliant. So, uh, yeah. Good, right, well, um, let's play a record. Do you reckon Noel Edmonds <laughs> did stuff like this on his show? He's back. <laughs> oh dear. Smith oh. <laughs> and Ask on XFM 104.9. Oh. Before the before that, we had uh, we had uh, Spunky News. <laughs> Spunky News coming up. Monkey News. <laughs> That's the sort of linked. This is uh, Doctor Fox. Is no better than this. No, you must see we're getting better now. Yeah. Have you got any uh, other news there, Carl? Uh, well, you were just talking about uh, bird muck. <laughs> 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 what a classy show this is. <laughs> 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 yeah. Bit of it, um, I imagine someone just having a barbecue tuned into this. Yeah. Can you turn the radio <laughs> off? It's talking about coming out of windows again, <laughs> darling. It's putting me off my sausages. No, oh, well, I was walking down, down the street and this pigeon, sparrow, whatever, uh, <coughs> did its thing and it landed on my ear <coughs> and, uh, I was like, oh, God. <laughs> so, uh, I thought, well, I'm not gonna wipe it off. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Cause I don't want to get it on my hands. Right. <laughs> so I thought I'd, I thought I'd leave it till I get home. So it's probably about... So you went to work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I met some friends. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Got went, went, on, went on the pool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I was best man. So after the speeches, yeah. um, that is brilliant. Oh, uh, it, it was on there for I don't know half an hour or something like that. Brilliant. Uh, get home and uh, get Did it not kind of slowly ooze down your neck? No, no, it's fairly hard. Right. And, um, <laughs> it sort of corroded me. ear. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking God. about? I don't Why know. did you leave it there, though? Why not just wipe it off with something? I, 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 I couldn't walk around pop with- it, Pop in a news agent and buy some tissues. But then I look stupid. <laughs> what? Well, where is the bridge muck on your ear? Brilliant. They're all- they're all wearing that now. But no, what, what is it they eat? It's alkali- no, it's alkali- really strongly alkaline, isn't it? Or is it acidic? I don't know. Maybe someone knows. Is bird yeah. milk acidic or alkaline? But it's corrosive, yeah. Weird, yeah. Isn't it? Weird. Weird, did it, isn't it? it didn't seep into your brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen, do you want to do, uh, do you want to set up Songs of Phrase? Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Um, if you've not heard the show before... I thought then... we weren't doing this this week. I, I thought, thought we weren't. No, we'll, we'll do it once, right? And then next week's the last one, so we'll do Rockbusters. Leave, leave that might out. be the last one ever, depending on whether Carl decides to come back yeah. in October or not. Exactly. I'm bored of right. it. I told you I'm bored of it. Why are you bored with it? I get bored quick with stuff. Yeah. I told, I told Suzanne the other night, I'd look she was, that <laughs> I haven't got, not ri got rid of her yet. She's... <laughs> you know what I mean? Things... You put, you put on a soft music though <laughs> first, course. didn't you? You didn't just like, start getting that around and... Yeah, you're you, know, you, know, you, you know you're a very lucky girl. Sorry? Well, I used to get bored with you and that. Yeah. Oh, dude. You're lucky you haven't pissed off. Yeah. Do you want all the champagne or what? Well, she was annoyed the other Oh, what's that on your ear? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> Pigeon shit, aren't it? We're walking to the pictures, right? To yeah. go and see, uh, Bruce Almighty. Sure. Why? And, uh, just something to say, innit? Yeah. So you were- you were trying to sneak in the back? <laughs> so, uh, on the way, cutting across Leicester Square, uh -huh. and, uh, those fellas who sell roses, he comes over, do you want one, do you want one? So don't do that, she's allergic to them. Right, so- so we'd go away. Yeah. She got all annoyed about that. Cause she's not allergic to them. Well, she's not allergic, no, but I, I, they're about three quid each. Cause <laughs> <laughs> she got one But what the point of that, guys, not that she really wants a rose, it's that you're willing to spend three pounds on her. Taking us to the pictures. <laughs> How much was that? That was eight quid each. Mm. Did you pay for it though? But did didn't you, you ever? If I if I know you, you had her dressed up as a small child. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Me you, and my son, please. Or you've made her sit on your shoulders and wear a long coat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anyway, listen. Songs of phrase. Then <laughs> you oh. paid for it to go in, and then you went and had a pint while she watched it. <laughs> yeah, there's no point in both of us seeing it. But tell me about <laughs> tell it. Tell me what it's like. Oh, right. Songs of phrase. So let's Again, explain what songs of phrase is. You do it. Okay. Oh, really? <laughs> um, if you think that Carl is bored with life, then you will be even more bored once you've heard <laughs> this particular quiz. The gist of it is that Carl has taken a well-known phrase well, or set. No, 
no. mean. Stop me there. Not no. a well-known phrase. Something that he said once. On this show. Yeah, probably. And he's somehow com uh, compiled together a number of different songs which have somehow <laughs> built up that particular phrase or sentence. Um, if it's anything about Chinese people, Philip Bailey will be involved. That's all I can say. <laughs> okay, let's hear it then, Carl. <laughs> Right. Alright, I don't I, know what that I is. I don't know what that was. This is appalling. I don't know this what is appalling. That is. Carl, Carl, I do not know what that is. What is the phrase? I just was saying last week about everyone's raving about Galileo. No, they're not. <laughs> no, they're not. No, about Galileo. no, they're not. No, that sounds like not. a sort of B-side from yeah. the Buggles. Everyone's raving about Beyonce and uh, Robbie Williams. Yeah. They're not. They're not. They're, people they're going pop what, idol. What are you into? Galileo's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Forget it. Forget it. No. <laughs> Placebo, song for Carl there. That's special needs on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant. Carl Pilberton. We were doing songs of phrase. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Oh, God. So, what is this phrase? What is the phrase, Carl? Last week we were talking about Galileo. Right. And I just was saying, <coughs> years ago, I, don't, I can't remember now, when was it? When was he doing his thing? End of the 16th century, I think. Right. And he was messing about trying to find out about speed of light or something, is it? No, he did lots of he did lots of stuff, going like All I was saying is Gravity, back then, yeah, surely yeah. everyone was saying, "Stop messing with that, make us a telly." You know what I mean? There was other things that people would have been happier with, sure, back then. Like the, yeah. Like the so now. the phrase is the phrase exactly is what the well-known uh, phrase is what. Uh, Galileo. Uh, oh, it goes like this, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Right. So it's Galileo, stop S talking to me talking about, about science. science. Make, Make me, me television. television. Make me television. Yeah. So you email in with with the bands and that. Brilliant. <laughs> right, let's oh, that, that, that is rock bottom. Of course I mean, it the, is. the well-known phrase being Galileo, stop talking to me about science. Make me television. <laughs> As a well-known <laughs> phrase, is the one of the weirdest things I've ever, forget jizz out of windows and things like that. That is the weirdest thing I've heard on radio as a competition. Can we have that one next week? <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, well, here, here are the prizes. If you, if you think, Rick, that the, <laughs> if you think the quiz has hit rock bottom, wait, wait till I tell you these prizes. Oh, no, brilliant. Um. Oh. I know that, um, we're very much pushing new music on XFM and it's an alternative music yeah. station, so you'll be pleased that we're giving away, now that's what I call Music 55, <laughs> featuring the likes of Busted and, uh, Daniel Beddingfield. Brilliant. Uh, you really know how to cater to our audience, don't you? The best dance album in the world, that includes, um, DJ Sammy, Scooter, <laughs> and, uh, Liberty X on there, <laughs> so I look forward to that. Yeah. Uh, this is not so bad, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds, uh, a live DVD of a, <coughs> pardon me, a performance, uh, at some, <coughs> pardon me again, but, <coughs> anyway, <coughs> <coughs> that basically sums up the prizes. So uh, I won't tell you the rest; they're all monotonous. But uh, anyway, <coughs> I think those crisps, Rick, have gone down the wrong way. <laughs> or, although I was eating goulash earlier. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. So anyway, yeah, that's that's some of the prizes. <laughs> and you can win some tat. So if you can identify these artists. It's a well-known phrase. Galileo, start talking to me about science. Make me television. Galileo! But easy this week, I think. I th those, yeah. Play a record, Carl. I mean, it's ridiculous. Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk. The Pixies. The Pixies on XFM 104.9, Holiday Song. You're talking about, um, people coming around and just banging the boiler and charging 90 quid. Um, I think it was last Christmas. We had a dripping tap, right? And, uh, it started off just dripping a little bit. And then, after a cut, I thought, you know, we'd get that sorted out. We couldn't actually turn the tap. Couldn't, it was just solid where the, the, the washer had gone. And then, uh, over Christmas, like, it's like, as before Christmas, um, it just started flowing. It was just like on. And I was thinking, this is terrible. It was terrible. It was the hot tap. And, uh, of course, everything, the caretaker gone away, everything had been closed down. So I called out an emergency plumber. Christmas. Yeah. Like, he couldn't get it, just 
turn the tap off, right? So, um, he was trying and trying, and in the end he said, well, what I could do is I could just squash the pipe, right, cut the pipe and squash it, and then you could change the whole thing. I went, yeah, whatever, right, because I can't have this, I guess. So, uh, he said, I've got to go to the van, and he got this tool, came up to squash the pipe, it was only a young lad, right, wasn't strong enough. So I had to help him squash the pipe. Right. He squashed the pipe, cut it, put a little nozzle on it, you know, just to seal it, right? And uh, I was 180 quid. 180 quid? And I was to say, surely that's half mine. Yeah. I helped it, and I was sort of being sarcastic when Johnny was there, I was going, how much was that tool you, he went, it was only about nine quid. I went, pays for itself, isn't it? Yeah. I was going, could I get one of them? He was going, yeah, get them anywhere. Oh, obviously, yeah. didn't it? Is it? And then he went, I wrote a cheque for an eight quid, and he went, oh, I didn't charge you for the nozzle on the end. I went, no. He went, I said, how much is that then? He said, two fifty. I said, I'll give you cash for that. Two pounds fifty. <laughs> 182 pounds 50. So he hadn't even really sorted the problem out. But what can you do? What can you do? You know, yeah. he wasn't ripping me off. That's the prices. Yeah. He's not going to go, I'll tell you what, mate, because you helped me, uh, call it quits. <laughs> yeah. Just buy me lunch. <laughs> it's yeah. not going to happen. Yeah. My mate was locked out of his, uh, flat once, um, and he went out and shut the door behind him, and that was it. And he looked through the letterbox and he could see his keys, mm -hmm. right? Phoned the locksmith, says, look, can you come round? I can see my keys, right? I just have to go out, and he went, well, yeah, but I don't, that doesn't matter. I said, I'm gonna try it, it's uh, 90 quid. And he went, 90 quid? He went, but I can see the keys. He went, yeah, I can get them for you. And he went, and my man said, you're gonna come round, you're gonna charge me 90 quid, and you're gonna scoop my keys up with a bent coat hanger. And the locksmith said, have you got a bent coat hanger, mate? It's brilliant. But it's a fair point, isn't it? Do it you know is what I mean? a valid point, that's it. And what, what can you do? <laughs> yeah. I'd have gone, ha, thanks for the expert advice, and then asked the neighbour for a bent coat hanger. And they went, well, we'll call it 100 quid. <laughs> yeah. But that's more expensive than locksmith. Well, yeah, because you're going to illegal traders. <laughs> exactly. We've got no licence. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got, we've got to pay yeah. a little bit more in case we get fined. <laughs> exactly. But that's, yeah. that's what was going on when, you know, the, the fellow was around the other day fixing the boiler in the bathroom. Just wanted to make sure that he was, that he was working on it because it all went quiet in there. Mm. He had the door shut. I'm trying to... Have a little quick, quick sort of peep, <laughs> seeing if he's doing anything. I push the door. <laughs> it's like this sounds. We're just pushing the door slowly, and he's going, "Don't come in." <laughs> he's like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> well, what was he doing? Don't know. But then he's like, three down. Probably doing a crossword again. <laughs> that's, that's what annoys me. The, the way that you know it's all secret. You're not coming in, and you, you hear the odd bang now and again. He's probably sat there, crossword, three down, giving it the old just now and again with his foot. Just, just, just annoying. How yeah. much did he charge you? 90 quid. It's just under 90 quid. Yeah. Yeah. And all he said was, you know, give it a bang. If it don't work again, give it a bang. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> is that an air block and they just like, what is it? I don't know. It's not that complicated. You wouldn't think a boil is that complicated. It's not like understanding, you know, how uh, a fast breeder works or a computer. It's a big lump of metal without water in it. How, how can we not know how that w yeah. We were discussing yesterday, me and Glenn were trying to work out how a fridge works. Right. It's pretty cool. Magic? It is the magic comes down the electricals <laughs> into the frozen peas. That's <laughs> what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. Can't still talk about, I, I know it's something to do with the, the hydrofluorocarbons are, can exist at much lower temperatures without freezing. So when they're entering the fridge, sort of under pressure, as they flow around, because the, the pressure goes down, they take energy from the, the it's, play records, it's perhaps a discussion to have in the pub, records, but not on the air. Play records, I still pub. can't figure out. I've never quite understood how a plane stays in the air. It always unnerves me when I'm in a plane. Turning a tap on, getting water. How <laughs> basic are we going to go? <laughs> Cargo's walking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Here's a bit of science for you. Go on. Right. Um, read the other day. Yeah. If you dug a big hole, right. Oh, God. Started digging, say in, uh, wherever, the Trafalgar Square, right? Yeah. Uh, you dig a big hole and you keep digging. Yeah. And you go right through the earth. Right. Out to the other side. Yeah. So you, you're somewhere in Australia or something, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then you go back to, come back again, come back to London. Right. Stand next to the hole, jump in it. Apparently, you can jump through the world in 42 minutes. <laughs> it's interesting. But then I was thinking, will you fall, and then when you come out the other end, would you fall back again? Well, yeah, you would, wouldn't you? What would happen is, you'd accelerate, uh, 10 metres per second 
per second to the centre of the earth, but you'd, have, but, you know, you'd, but, but you'd have such inertia, you'd nearly go as far out the other end before it was like a bungee jump, so you'd nearly get as far as the other end, and then you'd go back again, and you'd keep going until, back and forth, getting getting further and further away from making it, until you went da -da 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 -da, sort of back and forth in the centre, and then you'd stay still in the centre. Have you drilled a hole through the earth? <laughs> get in touch. Email xfm.co.uk <laughs> and just let us know how you got on. Did you get to the other side? Did you get to Australia? Did you buy one of those funny cork hats? Did how you see Paul Hogan? How does a fish work? <laughs> <laughs> Darkness growing on me, XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. I bored, I lost him, didn't I, in a little conversation. Yeah, there. you were talking about quantum physics, to be Yeah, fair. I was just explaining what a black hole was, because we were talking about that as well last night. And just halfway through, he just went, yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> put his headphones on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Oh, it's, the thing, it's the thing about Carl, he speaks with such authority about things that he thinks he knows about. Monkeys. And when you try, yeah, and when you try to explain to him about stuff, you know, he thinks, he goes, no, of course ghosts exist. And yeah. you try to explain to him why it's conceivable they don't. Ah, no, no, no. He can't, he can't be bothered with that. Yeah, you? he's, you did all your learning at about twelve, didn't you? Yeah, but I'm still picking bits up now. <laughs> <laughs> Said without irony! <laughs> oh, brilliant! What have you learned recently? Anything interesting recently you learned? Darwin. That's why I was asking you about him. Right. Yeah, just, Darwin. Uh, we know what he did, do you? I don't know what he did. I just read the other day that they've they've got a treatment for whatever illness he had. I thought it was a bit late. <laughs> 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 Can you imagine that saying that to his family? What did Darwin do? What did Darwin do? You I don't know. know, you were, um, you were just trying to explain it to me, but I'm, I'm busy doing stuff, aren't I? I can't take it all in whilst I'm sorting the ads out, putting CDs in. You know what well, I mean? He, he, Ticking he, off the knob news. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he formulated the theory of evolution based on natural selection. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but wait, wait, though. Do you, you think that's good? Do you think he's, do you think that's well done? You're impressed with that? Because you're not impressed with things like, you know, you famously said, uh, um, Newton, so it said gravity, but it was already there. If we'd have been floating around, it'd been a problem, we weren't, so I keep out of it. That's what you said. You said, Einstein, I've never used EMC squared in my life, but the bloke who invented the video recorder, I watch one a week. <laughs> so I wonder if you're impressed by Darwin formulating, I think, the most important scientific theory since, uh, Newton's laws. Has it made a difference? Or, or whatever he said? Would it have happened anyway? You can't do that. You're not allowed to say that. You can't say, oh, well done, I'd have found it eventually anyway. You can't do that. You've got to give people their due, do you know what I mean? But, but now it's difficult to find stuff because there's less to find out now. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it's uh, not uh, a competition. But on what scale? On what scale are you lo looking at? Why do you mean there's less to find out? Well, now, I mean, they, they're bringing stuff out that... <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's just... The iPod. Well, yeah. <laughs> sure. Didn't see the point in that, no. though, Pod. Do you know, he actually listed the three songs he'd ever want to carry around with him. I can't remember what they were. What are the three what songs you'd put Killing the like Georgie. Like... Killing the Georgie, yeah. Yeah, uh, what else? Probably have, uh, Elvis in the ghetto. Right. Yeah. Moving. Living in the city. Stevie do you know Elvis. what I like? Do you know why that? Because that's, that's like a little film to him. Yeah. That's three songs where there's a little story. He knows the ending. Yeah. But it's someone singing it to him. <laughs> a little... Just, just put them on it. How many songs can I hold? Well, seven and a half thousand. Put that on. Seven and a half thousand times, sure. Well, you don't need to, do you? I mean, that is like that joke. The, the, the wish. But, uh, imagine putting on seven and a half thousand, you know that, that joke about, you got three wishes, it says a never-ending bottle of Guinness, and you got a second wish, you got to have two more of these. Yeah. Uh, it's, you don't need to put them on seven and a half thousand times, do you? No, you don't, you don't have to. <laughs> Mm. Never mm. mind, Carl. Never mind. Uh, answers rushing in, we should point out, for the quiz. Most of them agreeing that, uh, it's pointless. Um, some people <laughs> have called it, it's so Songs of Phrase, of course, um, some people have referring to it now as Songs of Arse. <laughs> <laughs> which is uh, more than appropriate, but you'll be pleased to know that it's ending this week, and next week we've got the return of the even more pitiful Rockbusters. For the last one. That's back for the last one. We'd perhaps also need your petitions to Carl. If you want us to stay on the air, then you need to petition Carl, giving good reasons why he should stay, why this show isn't boring, or rather why he shouldn't be bored by it. I mean, you're bound to be bored as listeners, but obviously, uh, he's running out of steam now. Why don't you, what, what, what are you fed up with? You're just fed up with, uh, in general, are you? I mean, you want your Saturdays back, do you? Just want a bit of a life back, that's all. 
But if you don't do anything with your life when you got it. Why do you do this instead of, like, your day job? Can't. It's more important than my day job, innit? That's what earns the company money and that. Know what I mean? Well. So. What you do, what you do a regular show then? Sack someone who's, you know, quite well, frankly not putting the way. I've done that. I did that years ago. What do you mean? Done it. Told you, I've done a lot of stuff. Boxing. Done. <laughs> tech. Dancing. Done. No, you I turned out. The place was shut. <laughs> yeah, but... Dancing? When did you do dancing? That's when he, t when he went and said I want to do dancing, and he went along to the, the place and it was shut and that was it. And he said I didn't do it anymore. That's not doing it, is it? Boxing, he had a fight with one lad, then the lad beat him up and he didn't go again. <laughs> Oh dear, it's pathetic. Well, anyway, yeah. So this uh, is basically our penultimate show. Next week's the the final, and uh, we're all looking forward to that enormously. Yeah. But uh, that may be it forever then. And uh, this this you know, all for one, all, all you know, one for all, all for one. The Three Musketeers gone forever. Yeah. I for one, I'll be pleased. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have to get some of these taped because I like coming in sort of um, you know. Internet, Rick, it's... don't be afraid to nick as many CDs as you see fit on that last show. I, th that people have already nicked them. No, I know, but I just mean, take whatever you want. Is that Four Non Blondes is still there, isn't it? I think it's still there. Because I don't want that to be nicked. Yeah. And I got a feeling, um, there's, because I don't think there's any Smiths in the library, but there's quite a lot of Gina G. Really? <sighs> what? What was that sigh for? Nothing. Nothing, nothing. What? Ooh. Play a record. Uh, Monkey News is on the way. Plus the results. This isn't radio. Keep you've got to keep talking or playing music. Play some music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Art of Gold by Neil Young on XFM one hundred four point nine. Um, Pop Idol, of course, begins this evening. I know you're looking forward to it. Rick. Yeah, love it. It's love always it. a joy, and especially those early rounds with the uh, the, the mentors. Dips. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they are always extraordinary. Uh, but that's the only reason I watch. I mean, I can't be bothered with the later contest. It's just watching the freaks for the first couple of weeks. Uh it's an absolute uh, pleasure. Yeah, I sort of like watching the judges. They're good as well. Oh, the judges are good, yeah. I like yeah. the fact they, they they've got their little shtick, you know, the, the special jokes they've obviously written or just waiting to get them in. <laughs> yeah. It's just yeah. great. But I love when Pete Waterman cries as well. Does he cry? Sometimes if he's moved by it. <laughs> he's better than bloody Bobby Dallin. <laughs> like it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Rosie Ribbon made him cry. <laughs> He just wells up and then <laughs> like that. That's good. I like that. He yeah. talks a lot of old ass, doesn't he, Pete Waterman? I sort of quite like oh, him. Oh, I don't know. I find him irritating. Well, it's like yeah. he genuinely thinks he's up there with Lennon and McCartney. That's one of the great kind of pop Svengalis of his time. Yeah, and you know, you I don't know. You wrote songs for Sunita. Well, don't yeah, let's, that, let's, let's not let's not knock him. Most foxes on there. True. No, no. Doctor Fox is a genius. <laughs> you know, obviously, he can step in if there's any medical emergencies. Um. <laughs> Rick Waller, you'll be pleased. Now, I'm a, obviously, as you know, I'm a huge Rick Waller fan. Um, not only has he got a great singing voice, but he's, he really is a picture, mm. <laughs> isn't he? Um, no, I know it's a bit harsh. I've said it before, but I d he does, um, he does make me a little sick to the stomach when I look at Rick Waller. Um, and I, to be honest with you, it's his own fault. You know, he, got, he went in Celebrity Fix Club, he had a chance to sort things out, and his attitude was wrong, and, um, he didn't trim down. And, uh, he's, for want of a better phrase, a bloater. <laughs> and slightly grotesque, but you know, he's in the paper this week saying that it was all because of his image. He didn't fit the stereotype of what pop star should look like. Blah 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 blah. Well, he's disgruntled <laughs> by this. He's got a great singing voice. Well, he has got a great singing voice. But the point is this, Rick. The point is this. Since the days of Elvis, since the days of Bing Crosby, he's not as bad as Elvis. <laughs> no, but you're a star because you have to have the whole package: the voice, yeah, the sex appeal, everything. We know yeah. how it works. Kids buy it. It's pop music. That's what pop music is. Mm. You know, if you want to be uh, a big fat bloater, you've got to at least be as good as Barry White. He isn't. Or Pavarotti. Or Pavarotti. And so anyway, he set up a, um, he set up an organisation. He's already got a band, you know, he's got So a band. you're saying, get over it, the world should revolve around looks. But, well, no, I'm saying pop music, that's what pop music is. I mean, this kind of obsession with, he should get a chance, but you not know? not on record. No, I know, but, um, be a he session back, be, be a backing singer. The point yeah. is, this kid wants to be a star. He wants to be a star, doesn't he? Yeah. That's the point. He doesn't want to sing and make a couple of records. He just wants to be a star. He I'd, wants to I'd, be a I'd have thought that's that's the real rub. That actually he's not being truthful with himself. Yes. He doesn't just want to make beautiful music and sing well. He he wants to be you know carried round on a sedan chair and adored. 
Imagine that. I know. I mean, he'd have to have a lot of money to pay for the entourage that can carry yeah, him. Yeah, four elephants needed. But he's got a, a company now. He set it up with his dad. It's a management company. It's called Star Search. And basically, he's hoping to break the fickle industry, um, you know, uh, expectations. And so if you're a bit of a grotesque, <laughs> if you're a freak of some kind, if you're someone that Carl, you know, would be impressed by or, um, you know, alarmed by, then you can get in touch with Rick and he can put you in there. Women with beards little midget fellas, whatever. Whatever it does not fit the usual should norm. We, should we cut along? <laughs> I'm thinking <laughs> the three of us next week. We won't, oh, have, we won't have much to do after next week. Mm. You know, Ricky's got a bit of a singing voice on him. <laughs> I'm learning to play Blowing in the Wind on the keyboard by Bob Dylan. Yeah. So I can master that. I don't know what you can do. You, can, oh, you, can, dance. you can dance. You can dance, can't you? You know that. You've done it. You've done dancing, so. <laughs> exactly. It's like, you little know. Little donkey. I'll have a hair at Christmas. <laughs> Perfect. I'm good at that. What were you meant to be playing when you did Little Donkey in the play? Drums to We Three Kings. But you just busted live, didn't you? We're just donkey. talking about looks and stuff, right? <laughs> Always. Because, um, you know, it, it, sort of cheeky freak of the week, we did that and I stopped mm. doing it. Sure. It was upsetting a few people. Mm -hmm. Um, there was a thing <laughs> on the website the other day about Elephant Man, yeah. right? Just keeping up to... You know, up on the news, what's going on there? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, they did Drunky a news. They did, they did a thing about him and what he'd look like if his head wasn't messed up. Yeah, yeah. And they made a little picture for him. Was he quite good looking? Not bad looking, but you can't use it. It's not like you can't you can't put it on a passport. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, well, and the fact that he's been dead for several years. <laughs> yeah. No, but they also do that sort of thing for people who are alive. They say this is what you look like. So you can't use it for that. Yeah. You can't use it. Isn't like, that, like, that's sort of like rubbing it in, though, isn't it? Really? It is a bit. Yeah. yeah. Unless they said, "Good news, you were ugly anyway." <laughs> yeah. Just be quite honest. <laughs> you, you wouldn't have pulled it. You, you didn't look at them. If you were symmetrical, you weren't a looker. <laughs> you oh. couldn't use that on a little dating agency picture. This is what I look like. Yeah. yeah. This, is what, this is what I would have looked like. And they phone up and go, I'm intrigued. What do you mean would have looked like? <laughs> well, I see you, as we said, seven o'clock. How will I recognise you? I'll be eating buns. Yeah. Look for the giant cauliflower. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in a coat. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I love the fact that you're keeping up, keeping up to date with what the elephant man might have looked like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That is amazing. Carl's news is largely what's happening in around around 1880. Yeah, yeah, or might, what might have happened exactly, yeah. around 1880. No, but it's yeah. sad though. Did you watch that thing in the week? That what are you staring at program? I didn't know. I couldn't face it. it did, I know what you mean. It was about people who'd had unfortunate deformities. Yeah, stuff. yeah, and it was it was really sad. I suddenly felt bad about you know some of the stuff we'd yeah. talked about and what have you because. <laughs> Just say something like that. That's quite a nice thing to say. I was talking about, about some of the things we talked about. Should we go over what we've discussed today? What? What subjects have we brought up today? How can you feel sorry about things like that when we're still doing it? No, well, I'm, ju I'm just saying. You know, you have a laugh and that, but then you see a program about it and you go, oh. "What? You realise they're real people you're talking about." Yeah. When do you ever forget that? When do you ever forget that when you bring up these <laughs> cheeky freaks of the weeks, or when we talk about Rick Waller, that he's, there's not a real person on the other end uh, thinking about it? Yeah, but sometimes it's hard because they don't look like real people. <laughs> Play a record! Don't slag off Rick Waller. <laughs> that girl was on with a big head. <laughs> like bone selector. We played some, uh, Dizzy Rascal earlier. And, and that was wicked! <laughs> exactly, and he's the new kind of, uh, the kind of London rap sensation. Yeah, yeah. But let's not forget credit to the nation from 1994. They're Teenage from Birmingham now, Steve. Whatever happened to MC Fusion, he got a lot of bad press at the time, people didn't respect him, but I'm listening to that now, I think it was bloody brilliant. Yeah. Alright? And crucial, no? <laughs> Exactly, adverts. <laughs> Kings of Leon, Molly's Chambers on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, you're Stephen Merchant, and that little, little bald head of mank over there is Carl Pilkington. cock leaky soup? cock leaky soup is fine. That was one from Nick. Thanks for that, Nick. Yeah. Is it Carl was referring to the woman who chewed on a knob in a goulash. <laughs> exactly. People, if you uh, you've just tuned in, you've missed that hilarious story. Yeah. We just still don't know why she was eating goulash. I've got a rash look come up on my arm. Look at that. Brilliant. Fascinating. Thanks for that. That's from rubbing his head, getting him in headlock. And it's, uh, have you got some on your hair? Because look at that. That's like a heat rash. What are you washing your hair with? It's have you still got that bird shit behind your ear? What is that? That's really worrying, isn't it? 
It's like how, uh, like, the body changes over many years of sort of certain things. Yeah. It's like your body changes to protect yourself from the sun and what have you. Yeah. My head just got used to being rubbed. <laughs> yeah. It's reacting now. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, that's a defence mechanism, is it? Yeah. Uh, right, I see. All right. Look at that, that's horrible. Anyway. You've um, got something on your air, you know. Monkey news? I was gonna say, the winner. I don't think anyone cares. Oh, come on. It, uh, someone got all of them, didn't they? Well, okay, play it again then. This was Songs of Phrase. We did this The well known phrase is Galileo, stop talking about science, make me television. The most convoluted, banal quiz on any radio station ever. I mean, I'm including Moyles, Chris Evans, do you know what I mean? Simon Bates. That's worse than anything they ever did. Apparently, uh, Channel 5 have bought the rights. <laughs> 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 uh, oh, anyway, what were the answers, Carl? We had Queen in there, Altered Images, Thomas Dolby, yeah. uh, Beatles, Aretha Franklin. And, uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Well, extraordinarily, Tracy and John Burton from Colchester and Essex got all of those right. Why they would want the prizes, I've no idea, but good luck to them. They can enjoy those, uh, at some point. God bless. Okay, Monkey News? Do you want a bit? Yes, please. Play jingle. the jingle. This rash is weird. Oh, chimpanzee that! Monkey News! Right. Uh, right, they were filming a, a documentary, right, this telly company. Yeah. In a documentary. Who? Which one? Which one? Which I one? I don't know. No? Well, what was the documentary about? About monkeys. Yeah. Uh, where was it? Where Africa. was it? Africa. Right. Where, when was this? I haven't got a date. Okay. Recently, though, since the advent of television, yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, a bit of extra monkey news if you, <laughs> if you want it. Okay, always. Do you know the, um... Monkey news extra. Go on. Do you know the Halfords ads? Halfords ads? I don't think so. No, what happens? Halfords, they've, they've, uh, you know, they sell nuts and bolts and stuff. Right. Uh, they were using monkeys in the ads. Okay. Um. Yeah. And what happened? Packet. Don't they sell bikes, Alfreds? Well, mainly. <laughs> <laughs> Bicycles and, and motorbike stuff in that. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, so they're using monkeys in the ad, but what happened? <laughs> I can't handle it. What? I can't do this. Look what? at him. Look at him. <laughs> I don't care what he's doing. And it, well, basically, right, they've, uh, they, uh, there was a load of asshole because they were using these monkeys in this Alphards advert. Yes. Right. And what happened? Get to the point. It turned out it wasn't a problem because they were mechanics in the first place. Well, they were monkey mechanics? Yeah. What are you talking about? Mental. What are you talking about? That's not a story! Well, anyway, listen, let's get, let's get back on <laughs> They were mechanics in the first place. <laughs> right, listen. Right, so they're making this documentary. Right. And, uh, stumble across uh, a little gang of, uh, little gang. <laughs> <laughs> Come on! Just... Get I'm on with it, please. Little, little gang of monkeys. That's yes. the first time I've ever laughed, I'll hear that. I know! Well, brilliant. What do you want, a cake? <laughs> Come on! Can we play a song? Oh. I don't understand what is wrong with you, you freak. It's making me laugh. <laughs> Just tell us the story! Alright then, alright. <clears throat> So anyway, right, so there's this, this documentary being made, they found a little gang of monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> right, play a song, I don't know what's going on here, I apologise. Got a high to love away. According to the Beatles on XFM 104.9, I'm looking to with me, Steve Merchant. Right, Carl, come right, on, where, monkey where news. Where where everyone's composed, the jingle, please. Oh, chimpanzee that, monkey news. <laughs> excellent. Okay. Right. right, where were we? We were just start again. There's some people making a documentary. <laughs> for what? Okay. For making a documentary in, uh, in the jungle and that. Right. Stumble across a little gang. <laughs> okay, okay, come on! Alright. Um. A little gang of monkeys? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, come on! So the camera crew are there filming it. Yes. Everything's going normal. It's nothing, all nothing yeah. odd about it. Okay. <laughs> they don't- they're not running a restaurant, they've not got any barber shops, nothing. No. Just regular monkeys going about their business, yeah. So anyway, uh, mm. the- what- what normally happens is the monkeys st stick with the partner. They <laughs> 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 what? They- they don't sort of sleep around in that. Once they find oh, well, the- well, once they well, find well. the girlfriend or the boyfriend or whatever, yeah. they stick- they stick with them, right? Okay. But anyway, they were watching this one, right? And, uh, 
it's, it's going around a bit, sleeping around. Oily. And it was getting fatter. <laughs> they thought this is a bit odd. Yeah. Right? So, uh, followed it round. <laughs> and, uh, see it having it away. Turns out, little prostitute. <laughs> 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 ah! Oh God! It's a little monkey prostitute. And it was getting fatter because it was charging them bananas. What a load of old rubbish! It's charging them bananas. <laughs> what was it? A boy or it was a woman? A little woman monkey. <laughs> ah! That's the most extraordinary monkey news I've ever heard. Oh, that is genius! Has this documentary been televised? <laughs> Uh, I don't think it's been on yet. No. Yeah. And that's all the information you've got? <laughs> yeah. And, and is that, that's, um, that's one banana for everything? The half banana is for... Just all. Uh, a poor job. Right. Um, if you want full-blown, uh, monkey sex, <laughs> it is two and a half bananas. <laughs> sure. Sure. So, uh... Let's just play a song. Okay. <laughs> Let's just play All right, well, this is our penultimate show, which we'll be back next week. We're gonna make it a barnstormer, I'm sure, lads. I want 100% behind it, 110% next week. All right, none of this giggling, none of this infantile giggling, okay. like two schoolboys. Right. All right, we're gonna come back, we're gonna have some quality monkey news next week, we're gonna have all kinds of treats, I would think. Okay. Some great prizes. All right? Are yeah. We okay? Yeah, we best show. Let's make next week the best show ever. Good luck. If you miss it, then you miss out. We're ending with a track from a couple of years back, I think it was 92, 93. Uh, Dinosaur Junior, start chopping. Play that. Start playing. Forget start chopping, start playing. Right. Alright. See you next week. Yeah. <laughs> Five past one then, already, of a Saturday. So I'm Ricky Gervais. That was Placebo, yeah, with special needs. Which brings me to my next point, with me, Carl Pilkington. Carl Pilkington, there he Steve is. Steve Merchant. 104.9. That's it. We're back then. Well, for one last time. Well, it's certainly the end of the season. We're away for at least, you know, two months. We're doing the office special. Um, and possibly forever, depending on whether Carl decides he wants to carry on with this. It's because, I mean, we do this for fun. We don't need to do this. We don't need to do this for, you know, uh, um, Money, obviously not. The kind of money you're earning, Rick, you do not need to do this. I don't need right. to do it. It's quite honestly beneath me. Yeah. You know. We don't need to do it to further our career because it's embarrassing being Didn't your XFM. Can say, do not even bother cashing those XFM checks. It's I not worth your while. No, it's not. It's not. It, yeah. It, yeah, the time it took to sign them, <laughs> exactly, it, 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 wasn't, yeah. it wasn't worth it. Um, so we do this basically to ridicule Carl on a, on a large sort of platform, I say large platform. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, no other, no other radio station I mean, will have us. It's roughly the same as standing up in McDonald's. I imagine so. Uh, but of uh, a yeah. lunchtime though. Yeah, yeah. Um, or so when uh, it's just the cleaning staff mopping <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, in the, if Carl doesn't come back, he's breaking up the, uh, three-way partnership He's very much forever. Sting, isn't he? Um, yeah. about, what, 1986, 87? Uh, exactly. You know, he's gonna go off and sort of make some quite poor, sort of jazz-inflected, white man's soul, yeah. and leaving us to, you know, go about our business. Play pizza places. Um, <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well I'm gonna go into sort of say, right say, Dad, place. why can't I be in the CIA? <laughs> yeah. You don't know anything about it, you're a drummer. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll have to see. I mean, do you think anyone cares? I wouldn't have thought so. Because I think if someone was interested in having some good chat and some great laughs, they'd spend some more time with their friends. Yeah. Or listen to another radio or station. Or listen to a decent radio show. Or I think or like that, yeah. they listen to XFM for some music to have on in the background that's loud enough yeah. so they can hear it while they're hoovering. Yeah. I don't think our fans hoover. Well, true. I think true. you've got to have- Or shoot up, whatever. I think you've got to have a house <laughs> yeah, to, yeah. to hoover. I tell you what I do want though, some great music. They do indeed. They'll be saying, since you've been gone. See that? Oh, That's the sort of link I can do if we, if we stay together. If you together. could cut out all the other drivel you speak, you'd be great on magic. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Um, you've got a... Come on. You've got a, you, I know, you've got a rainbow something, haven't rainbow. you? Rainbow. You've got a rainbow something. <laughs> oh, it's rainbow. <laughs> well, I mean... For a last show, that song had everything. It's got, <laughs> it's got two guitar solos. Yes. It's got a key change. It's got bad grammar. Since you've been gone by <laughs> yeah. Rainbow, and that's for Canfield, the Prince of Rock. Yeah. He's going to be the king when Vance 
you know, just hands over his- his crown. Yeah. And you've still got that on XFM, so, you know, don't worry about us going. Oh, you weren't? Oh, okay then. <laughs> no one cares. No one no cares. No one cares. This is our last show, let's make it a good one. Let me give out the email address because I imagine there's gonna be a flood of emails. <laughs> saying, please, Carl, keep the team together. Yes, it's, uh, jono.coleman. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> Coleman's not a team. He's just a big lad. Yeah. Right, come on. Um, what do you mean, come on, I've got nothing. Ricky Dot Oh, Ricky Dot Gervais, uh, XFM. Yeah. XFM. Or Carl Dot Pilkington, cos you can do it throughout the week, you can do it throughout the two months. Mm -hmm. And, um, what's the, what's the phone number for XFM? 0207, is it 766 6000? And then just ask people through the car and leave a message on his voicemail. Yeah. Um, so email him a lot. 0207 766 6000, I think, and just ask for Carl Pilkington. Yeah. Little Carl Pilkington, little baldy mank twit. Uh, and say, please stay. Yeah. Please stay. Um, Carl, say something then. Oh, are this you? This is our show. Say hello. What are, you, what are your feelings, Carl, so far? I mean, is, are you tearful? Are you upset? Not at all. No. Can't, can't wait for three o'clock. Sure. <laughs> so, you, it was interesting how Ricky was saying he only does it for the fun. I haven't even got that bit. Yeah. <laughs> I am paid peanuts to work Saturdays, yeah. which wrecks me weekend. <laughs> paid peanuts, you get monkeys. I have, <laughs> I have no fun. Yeah. Right? You have a laugh. And what people You love is, this, you love this! You love me coming in and having a little chat beforehand and after. Yeah, but that's the funny thing, innit? Listeners just think, why, why does he get so moody about it, having Ricky annoying him yeah. just on a Saturday? Yeah. It's not just of a Saturday. Why? It's in the week as well. <laughs> well and how it's do way I annoy you? The how do I annoy you? Daily. How comments. do I annoy you, Carl? So you can't if you be specific. Um, See, the first thing that springs to mind when I'm trying to work with Steve before saying, "Come on, let's you know find some interesting stuff to talk about." I think you were playing the accordion in the air. <laughs> was it the accordion? I mean, yeah. it doesn't really matter. They get the idea. <laughs> Although I was... can't play the accordion, so it wasn't very good, was it? Where did you find an accordion? I just, I just was one out there, right? And then Next I- the drum kit you started playing with. And then, yeah. then I had a loudspeaker and I put the accordion for the loudspeaker. Then it loud, those loudspeakers. They're the, amazing. My question is this, Carl, do you honestly think that's gonna stop just cause we're not on air anymore? <laughs> he's not gonna see you on a Saturday, so he's just gonna come in even more. Yeah, I can just drop he in. He won't bother me as much, though. I think he will. And he'll have his fob taken off him, so he won't, he won't be able to just wander in. Of course they won't. So, what, they they're won't. not, do you think they're, they're, they're gonna, they're, of course they're gonna let Ricky Gervais mm -hmm. walk in any time they want. Yeah, I might come in, I might do a few trailers, might hang out, you know, with Andrew, going, hey Andrew, how's it going? He'd go, yeah, we're oh, having a bit of trouble, what do you think? i will say, lose that off the playlist, put that one on, sack then. Yeah. yeah? Let's have a little bit of feeder. <laughs> feeder, forget about tomorrow. At least we're here today, Steve. <laughs> oh, the three of us for a, an hour and a half more. The last time ever possibly. It's up to little baldy head manky. Well, little Carl Pilking Todd. <laughs> a number of emails, Rick. Yeah. This is from Matthew Davis. I think he very much captures the mood of the email public. Uh, his, his email is just simply titled, GO! IN THE NAME OF GOD, GO! <laughs> it says, why wait till three? Why not leave immediately and stop subjecting us to this abject misery? Well, Carl did once when he had to get a train. Of course. So, uh, that's never happened on radio before. But who knows, if we stay tuned, we might shoot off at, uh, at twenty to two. Or we might get better. We might get better. We might get better because we've done a bit of planning because I got Carl round last night. Really? To do some planning of the show, didn't I? And so we've, we've yeah, got- Yeah, I thought you were gonna be there, Steve. No, I wasn't talking about it. Yeah, well, I, I called him off and said, why, what we're doing? He said, well, you can come round and, you know, have a chat, yeah. maybe get some ideas and that for yeah. tomorrow. So I said, is Steve there? Yeah, Steve, Steve will be coming, <coughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, go round. It's close, next, next to his flat, it couldn't, the pub couldn't be closer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright? Yeah. Uh, unless there was sort of spirits and that in the lift, they couldn't have gone closer. <laughs> yeah. Alright? So turn up, you're not there. No. Yeah. He's lied. Yeah. yeah. Right, well, so I knew you wouldn't come out if it was just like you thought I was gonna muck around. I had to pretend it was work right. to get you out. So, you yeah. weren't there, Steve. No. Anyway, so he says, oh, come in the flat, you know, um, got, got an interesting book that, that you'll like. Okay. So I think, well, that's kind of work, you know, sure. he's trying and that. Yeah. So I go in thinking we're gonna get some, some good ideas and that from this book. Couldn't find the book. He looked for about 40 seconds and said, oh, I don't know where it is. Don't know. <laughs> come on, let's come in here, let's have a wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sat in the lounge, yeah. right, sat there just chatting to his, his girlfriend and that, just chatting. He comes wandering out, in his underpants. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was comfortable, yeah. 
I don't know if you were comfortable because it was sort of pulled up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right between the crack. Right. <laughs> Looked like. Uh, okay, probably like a gay sumo wrestler. <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> and I did a little dance for you, didn't I? Because there was MTV on, I was doing a little dance. Dancing to Elton John's new one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! And what did you say? What did you say when I was doing a little dance for you and my pants pulled up? Like, like do you remember what you said? Mm. You went, I, I poured him a drink, he's in my home, I'm entertaining him, he goes, are you sure you're not a bender? <laughs> yeah. Is that any way to treat a host? I think it was Outrageous. the right time to ask. <laughs> But we did do some work, didn't we? Because you then, you got confused and you said, he said he's, you know, oh god, it's like a, a child or a cat when it's confused. He went, Steve reckons, in ancient Greece, right, it was better to shag a bloke than a woman. And I went, well, yeah, I mean, that's about the, the male being, uh, um, sort of a, a first class citizen, yeah. much better, wasn't it, an aspiration yeah, the, the to sleep with a beautiful Carl, man than a beautiful woman. Women were lower class citizens, yeah. so therefore men were seen as, uh, uh, as higher class. So to have sexual relations with a man was, there was no shame in that. No. In fact, it was looked upon And as I said, well, was, you know, ancient Rome, I said, um, you know, Nero, he used to, he sit in his big jacuzzi <laughs> and he used to get, you know, pretty boy men, to just go into the water and just nibble at his testicles while he he's having a wash. He didn't do that. He, he did. He no. Yeah. And he's not a gay fella. No. Well, no. I mean, you know, I don't know about Nero, but I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't a case of a big delineation between what was heterosexual and what was gay. It was just, you know, whatever. Yeah. So what? What did this fella do then? This one who's having his. Well, he was. He testicles. was pretty much top top boy, Nero, for yeah. a while. He was in charge. And. uh, you know, and they, you did what you did what you're told. If uh, Caesar or, but why know. were people going round there? Why didn't they go? Oh. No, they weren't dropping in. <laughs> <laughs> they, it wasn't like the door was open. I was going to see what Nero's doing. It's not like when I pop in here to no, see you. No, yeah, normally what would happen is he'd say, "Come back to my place. I got a book for you." <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> pop in, but you'd he'd come out it. in his pants. You'd, you'd Elton John would be on. You'd have probably been like a delivery boy or a stable boy or something, you know. And you'd have popped round there, and you'd have gone there at Nero. There's, uh, there's the tablets of stone you wanted. And you go, Pilkington, why are you out here? Pop under, I don't know why he's French. <laughs> what, what is that? I don't know why he's French. Just pop under the water and nibble at my testicles and you'd have done it. Because he was Nero. I wouldn't. He would have. Well, there's, no, there's no way I would have done. Yeah, well you would have. What have I done? I've dropped a pizza off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you've why got around there? Nero's face for pizza. <laughs> I've right. a pizza. Right, <laughs> I'd, I'd say I've done my job. Right. Yeah. That's not the sort of tip I wanted. <laughs> 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 no, he just said, get the little baldy chap to nibble on my testicles, and you'd remember the water. No, I wouldn't have done it. No, well, you would have done it. Well, I wouldn't have done well, it. Well, well, uh, 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 can I just say this, Steve? Not only would you be nibbling his testicles, you'd have been going mad. You'd have been noshing him just for extra. You'd have had a. You'd have been doing everything he wanted. You'd have been going. He'd have gone. I didn't ask you to do that. You'd have been going mm. mental. You'd, they'd have been chewing, slurping, right. smacking, poking. He'd have chopped. You'd have. You'd have gnawed. His right. packet. Oh, you think you're eating Walker's crisps? There'd be bubbles, there'd be blood. Oh, it would be horrible. The Beatles from the soundtrack to the Yellow Submarine, actually, and that's Hey Bulldog. On XFM 104.9, our last show, maybe. Me, Ricky, Steve, and little Carl. All right, Carl? But um, that, that book, that that wasn't a fake. Uh, it wasn't like just a ruse to get you back to show you me and dancing in pants to Elton John. It, it's that. Uh, what was your girlfriend doing during that? Instantly, I think she was just getting on with sort of like packing up sort of boxes because yeah, we were moving. She's she's moving like, sure. I, don't, I don't think. Well, she's seen it all before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and the book was. Uh, do you remember that book that I showed you? That um, it was um, a man's body and owner's manual, and it's just yes. like loads of stats. And there's one in there. Yeah, it's kind of like a Guinness Book of Records of of men. Yeah, yeah. There's one section there. There was uh, a. Sorry, hang on. It's not a Guinness Book of Records of men. <laughs> that just sounds a little bit like you and I were sitting around your house <laughs> looking at a big book, picture of men. The big it. man book. <laughs> the big man. He book, is yeah. a big man, isn't he? Yeah. He should be on the front cover. Yeah, it was a book more about the kind of physical body and exactly, about yeah, biology and, so and social and you know, s sex and all that sort yeah. of stuff. And but uh, we didn't which look is, at the sex. Which, which is where was uh, uh, we got the uh, knob news for today from, right? This is this is true, right? Um, I read that the. Oh, you left someone's eye out. Knob news. Then you've got the jingle. Yeah. Um, I read that the smallest ever functioning penis, right, 
was under three quarters of an inch when erect. Extraordinary. That is bad luck, isn't it? And yeah. it's a micro penis, so it's perfectly, perfectly scaled down. Just a little, just a little look at Carl's face. Well, come the fella have said, look, right? I'm not happy about it, <laughs> so I don't, don't print it. <laughs> <laughs> It's not the sort of press people want, is it? <laughs> there wasn't a picture of him. It was anonymous. They didn't read the book and, uh, at, at work the next day and go, look at this, Frank. What? Smallest ever penis, uh, half an inch. He didn't go, it's me! <laughs> he just went, yeah, loser. Yeah. You know what I mean? Anyway, let's have a shower. I'm all right. <laughs> I'm all right. He must have <laughs> had to have a little jod with a pair of tweezers. Yeah, presumably. Because you couldn't even get a... Fist, I mean, no. that is bad luck, isn't it? Was he a good looking fellow? What or? would you do, right, if, um, uh, uh, he'd invited you around and said, right, and he was like the king, right, and he went, oh, Carl, can you just go in there and just nibble at it? And you go under the water, and you're just about to nibble at it, and you go, you come up and you go, that's tiny. Would you be disappointed or relieved? Right, well, that wouldn't happen. No! Carl, I'm saying if it did, would you be, would you be disappointed? Would you go, oh, that, I can't even get, I don't know where to start with that, or would you go, oh, thank God it's not a big one? You've got to remember that he's the emperor, so you've got to do what he says, or he'll have you killed. What would you do? Would you would you go? Oh, a lo lovely set of tackle, or oh, it's not as big as I wanted, or would you th yeah, secretly think I'm glad it's not I big because I didn't want to because I'm not that guy. I'm not. I'm not even gonna think about it because I wouldn't do it. I know I wouldn't do it even back then. <laughs> even back then, what do you mean? Even back then, what? When was when was Nero at, at it? What? what <laughs> <laughs> well, the Roman Empire was sort of like two thousand. Well, it stretched up to about yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it's a long time ago. Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. You'd have to. You'd have to. I always remember. Um, we're still doing knob news. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> just the like, just knob news extra. Knob news extra. Excellent. Well, in um, you know, I didn't do that well at school and that, right? But we had biology, mm -hmm. and I didn't take uh, didn't take much of it in. But there was one day when. When it was about, you know, knob news and stuff. <laughs> sure. um, and it was all about how uh, blood, you know, is what makes engorges yeah. the erectile tissue. Sure. Yeah, it was all about that. And uh, there's this girl in our class called Paula, right? We were sat there watching it and she fainted. You just heard her go, oh! <laughs> and she hit the floor, right? Because we were all sat on top of the desk watching this. But I yeah. wasn't really, what, I wasn't that interested in that. No. Uh, I wasn't looking at it and that. But, uh, but Paula, right, she, she <laughs> fell over. <laughs> and the funny thing was, right. What was uh, it, a video? Yeah, a video of like this, this <laughs> blood. Yeah. Doing, doing the business to yeah, this, yeah, yeah. this fella's member. Sure. Right. And, uh, she fell over, like. <laughs> and everyone's like, oh, what's up with her? <laughs> and the teacher was trying to like wake her up and give her water and that. <laughs> And it was really weird because then the nurse came in, and yet this video was still playing. <laughs> and the nurse came in. What happened? Well, she's seen this. Yeah. And you could hear like you know, then, then it was going on to like sex education on the video. It was all done from start to finish. What yeah. happens? Da -da -da -da, and by the end, and she was still out cold by the time it got to like, and then they had a baby. Yeah. Yeah. Right? <laughs> And that just, that just reminds so me of it. So it then. seems to me that that but, was a sex that, education class. She fainted when the penis got erect, and when she woke up, a baby was born. That's yeah. probably what she thinks happens. She's yeah. wandering around now. And she the, 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 the whole class just missed out of it because they yeah, saw so someone. If she's ever with a bloke and he gets an erection, she just goes, "Oh uh, no!" Well, that's get it. Pregnant. She was a bit of a class tart, really. That's yeah. why. Oh, like, Carl, 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 Carl. No, she but. She was. That's that. Everyone was like, "What's up with her?" No, not she's not seen it before. But, just reminded me then. <laughs> Weird. But anyway, yeah, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I would be Anyway, yeah, well, let's leave Nero aside. Yeah. The other thing in this, should we play a record and come back? Yeah. There's another yeah. interesting fact. There is such story yeah. facts in there. Yeah, there's more we're facts. We're running over. It won't be knob news, it won't be knob news, there'll be all different types of news. <laughs> <laughs> Libertines, don't look back into the sun. On XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington, for possibly the last time ever. I was coming in today, Steve, and I was walking just past, um, Shaftesbury Avenue, at the beginning of Shaftesbury Avenue, and, uh, it's sort of a little bit of a tramps corner going on there. Mm -hmm. And there was a couple of tramps, proper, proper tramps, already had a few, 
and uh, about sort of like 40 maybe, right, or that, that they could be 30, they could have an hard life, they probably have, but he was going, yeah, and for, and, uh, he's a, and, uh, John is coming down, but, uh, Les isn't gonna make it. And I think they're just planning their social, yeah. a meeting there, I just think that they, that's nice, they've got, you know, they have a, they don't just drink by themselves. Yeah. They have a, oh, what are we doing tonight? I thought we'd get drunk and sleep in his hallway. way. <laughs> we did that last night. <laughs> but I just like the idea that yeah. they're, they're planning it, and yeah. they've got mates and they do stuff, and they go, alright, how's it going? Well, we know it's going. Yeah. I'm sitting next to you in a pile of pits. <laughs> you know <laughs> how it's doing. Do you, I, I was also thinking, do you think they ever wake up, like, before they've had anything, at like nine o'clock and go, oh. <sighs> I was pissed last night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. You were talking absolute rubbish. What was I doing? You were just going, I was, uh, You were just showing uh, at cars walking uh, in the street. You were joking. Was I, was it, was I really embarrassing? Yeah. Well, you were pretty drunk. I'll tell you this, yeah, I'm but never gonna do that again. Oh, but at least I didn't make a pass at Dirty Agnes. <laughs> oh, God, what did I do? You were just going, yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> just love the idea they have no little, yeah. little conversations and that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I go, I imagine one of them going, oh, I'm not coming out tonight, I've got no money. <laughs> Nor have we yet. Yeah. I'm just gonna go and dance. Just go and dance outside of McDonald's. Seriously, I, I only made 18p today. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. You know, because I always, you know, I've always had a, a soft spot for the homeless. But do you remember that time I was walking over to yours once? And, um, see, there's the homeless people, there's those ones that, <laughs> they try to retain a certain dignity. Um, by, they won't just come up and ask you for money. They'll come up and maybe try and start a conversation oh. <laughs> before introducing the fact. <laughs> the fact that what what you despise and annoys you is the try that the thing they're trying to hold on to is a little bit of pride. <laughs> I know. And you, what would you want them to do? Well, just, be, like, just be crushed in a skip, going, "I'm just give me some money." No, look I at me. I just think, come out and say it. You know, come out and say it. But don't try and fool me because sometimes I feel like I've been tricked. I get annoyed because I feel like I I didn't see you coming. You came out of left field, you know, Sorry, I didn't know you were a tramp. I imagine the fact that they're bare chested, apart from a blanket with their hand out, covered in sores, and no teeth is a clue that not they're probably- Not this one, Rick. Not really. This was one of those ones, you sometimes see them, the ones, they're slightly older, and they've got a full suit on. They wear a complete suit, like a pinstripe suit or something, with maybe trainers, <laughs> admittedly. <laughs> yeah. And I sometimes think to myself, you know, at what point in that moment before they finally left the house for the last time, did they think, well, what, well I'm gonna be homeless. I want to look good if I'm going to be. But it happens, I'm sleeping rough. I but it does happen quickly. It sort of happen. It can yeah. happen in a matter of mm. days or weeks. Anyway, listen. I don't. I'm not begrudging the fact that he asked for money. That's fine. I just felt a little bit annoyed because I thought he was an ordinary person. Right. And he came up to me and he said nice to me, "Go on." And he said to me, um, "Excuse me, mate. Have you got the time?" <laughs> and I said, uh, "Whatever. You know, ten past three. And he went, "Have you got any money?" And I knew that. I was annoyed, and and it annoyed me because I thought. <sighs> I should have known straight away. I mean, a homeless person, you know, I sensed it, sensed it straight away. Yeah. Excuse me if you got the time. I wanted to say to him, where have you got to be? Well, yeah. What appointments have you got? Well, no, maybe he, d he d goes to work, he starts begging at three o'clock. Mm. Yeah, it's, it, he asked all that day, he goes, what's the time? They go, quarter to four, or whatever. You know what I mean? Then he goes, oh, give us some money. It's three o'clock. Right. right. He, but maybe there's the mornings off. It yeah. might have been his, it might have been his day off. He was doing half day or, you know, shift work. Yeah. He might, you know what I mean? You never know what shift they're on. I just on. think, Rick, when you see those people from shelter or from famine relief in the street, they've got to wear those kind of, those little things over their clothes that yeah. say where they're from. Or yeah. at least some kind of name tag. Yeah. So you know when you're stopped by them, you know what to expect. They've got a clipboard. I know. These homeless people who come out of there, they look like regular people. They come lurching out like zombies. You go, oh, you think this, that's, a, that's an attractive woman? She's just come over. Oh no, look, she's got a dog on a piece of string. I know, yeah. I just think they've got to come out with that's it. Just come stuff. out with it. Just be yeah. honest. Be, to be, you know, be proud. Those people with a thing sometimes annoy me. It's where they stand right in the middle of the pavement. I have to zigzag. I have to mm. cross the road four times to get through them. Mm. It's like it's like playing getaway yeah. on video, avoiding all these up and down Oxford Street. You have to really, and they, they come out, and um, worse than they recognise me. That's why I've got about eight standing orders now where I've been caught. But and I I'm leave worried. the house and I'm, it's just like people are trying to take my money from me. <laughs> Between my house and the tube, there's just swarms of people trying to take my money from me. <laughs> at any cost. Carl's got his first little direct debit, haven't you? Five quid a week or so, quite a bit a month. Yeah, I've, I've joined some, uh, something to help Africa out. Mm -hmm. Um, I quizzed her for a bit. I mean, she came over and she was saying- she, He was talking to her for about 40 minutes. Yeah. Just making yeah, well, sure yeah. your money was going right to the right place. Yeah, I was saying, you know, uh, why have I got to give you my bank details? This is the thing. And I was saying to her, I'm sure you'd make more money, right? If you just had a little thing that you put money in. I said, I, I want to help you out, right? 
but it's the fact I've got to give you bank details. And she's saying, no, this is the way we guarantee we make money. Uh, and, uh, you know, we can help places out because we could be out all day and we could only earn like 50p, whereas, yeah. you know, we know that it's worth us standing around. Yeah. So I was like, well, fair enough. So, so what's, what's my money going to be doing then? And I think it's called a, a care, care of the world or something. Yeah. And she's saying we're giving them uh, money to buy hammers and we're not just going to give them money to blow in and stuff. They've got to like work and-, and They don't it. give them money? Well, whatever. What do you think of these people just like- uh, <laughs> and these these drought planes like it's a being... gift voucher for being cute. <laughs> <laughs> so they have to buy a hammer. No, what they, they, they go with the buckets and go, oh, and they throw it up and they go bundle. <laughs> yeah, she she was making out anyway, right? That she was nice enough. She was selling it to me. She said, you know, we give them the tools and they feel good because they're building up their own place and everything. Mm. And uh, so fair enough, right? And now I've done that for two months. So they've had a tenner off me already. <laughs> I'm checking it, making sure they're not ripping me off and that. Yeah. If I ever go to Africa and I need a hammer, <laughs> and there isn't one, yeah, I'll be livid. You'll be livid because <laughs> you know it is a lot of money. Sure, sure. Every, every month, fiver. Yeah. And you know, you're talking about people hassling you and that in the street. I actually moved flat. The last flat I lived in, I moved from there because of the the hassle. That really? Was, yeah, it was a high street, and you couldn't, like you were saying, you nip out for a loaf. And spend about forty quid, yeah. <laughs> just just on people saying, "Give us some money for this." Some items, tramps, heart attacks, old yeah. people, or whatever. It's yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. so it ended up pushing me off that street. It was no, like, I, I can't handle this. It's, <laughs> get, it's getting crazy out there. They measure well those little stalls. Yeah. Hey, but listen, let's make the world a better place with a little bit of music. Oh, thank a bit you. Of Bauhaus. Yeah. <laughs> Give generously, people. Yeah. yeah. Bauhaus's version of David Bowie's Ziggy Stardust on XFM 104.9. And Ricky Gervais will be Steve Merchant Carl Pilkerton, possibly for the last time. And as a special treat, <laughs> a return, sort of like a summer special, an end of term, well, a gift to the fans, Carl is bringing back Rockbusters. Oh. No. Do you, to, do you want to explain it? Uh, Rockbusters is basically Blockbusters. Completely ripped off, done with music. Um, that may or may not be a cryptic clue, and may or m may not be the actual band name, and may or may not be the actual letters he said they were in the first place. Do you want to sort of describe one though, in case someone's a new listener? And, like, well, exploding pet was Atomic Kitten. Yeah. Okay. But basically, yeah. for those of you who are new to the show, this is the final show. Uh, Carl reads out what he considers to be a cryptic clue. It's yeah. not a cryptic clue, it's just some words. It's just a yeah. string of words. Yeah. And from that, you are supposed to deduct the name of an artist or a group or a band. Um, we've, we've had things like the Jamaican fella swinging a fish round. That was de Trout Spinners. De Trout Spinners. So that's the sort of, that's the level of intellect you are getting from Carl Pilkington. What was the just one? Just do the competition, what? I was thinking, you f was it that she, she fell down Wet in Texas? Wet Knee Houston. She fell down into a puddle in Texas. Yeah. Wet on a knee. Wet Knee Houston. Yeah, so you it said works, it twice, it it's not cryptic, it so like just that. do it. Come on. Right, so there's three of them and you email in your answers. We've got some good prizes today and that. Right? Well, um, let me see the prizes. They yeah. aren't bad. We're through it with this, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The competition's bad enough, let alone just listening. What, what's he got? We've got three DVDs Brilliant. and about six CDs. He's got the young ones yeah. and all that, like TV things, there's some great CDs. Yeah, go on. Right, so the first one, uh, cryptic clue, um, this vegetable mm -hmm. started life down under, right? Mm. This vegetable started life down under, the initials K-O, right? K-O, this vegetable started life down under. Second one, um, the things that, uh, you normally find on the beach, right, have been found floating around the moon. <laughs> Right? Yeah. That's, uh, I think it's T.S. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you think it's T.S.? Yeah. You set the questions, but you're not sure. Um, so, the things you normally find on the beach have been found floating around the moon, right? And the last one, uh, well, if you put that many in the post, I'm surprised I didn't receive one. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> he thinks they're great! Well, he thinks he's brilliant! Well, you know, if you put that many in the post, I'm surprised I didn't receive one. Is it Latin? He did all the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The what? initials there, FC. 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 Mm. Right? So you email in the answers, ricky.gvays at xfm.co.uk. Win that Hey, stuff. let's slam dunk in some sounds. Well, slam dunk some ads first. Okay. <laughs> Put out on XFM 104.9. It bloody better be. <laughs> I know you're from fan. <laughs> You've enjoyed it. You love a bit of hip hop, don't you? XFM 104.9. Yeah, keep it real. Hippy hop. <laughs> oh, it's so, really good. Yeah. yeah, sweet man, sweet. Half it's that kind through. of stuff, it's that kind of uh, lingo and that kind of patois that they won't be hearing next week. No, I know. No, no. Off making some bling bling. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, that's the sort <laughs> of. Yeah, yeah. Sweet. It's weird, <sighs> all that, uh, all that talk and that, isn't it? I don't know Brilliant. what that means, Excellent. What do you mean? No, just all that bling bling and all that, because I, I didn't understand it, right? So I did a bit of, uh, did a bit of research. Brilliant. That's what you should do if you don't understand something. Yeah, look it I mean, that's always what, scoop that's what I, I always scoop it I always do that. I yeah. always do that, though. You know I do that. No, I'm yeah. giving you props for even doing it, Yeah, so. massive respect and big right. you up. Yeah, go on. But, um, it's all slang. Right? Oh, yeah. Is it really? Is it really? It's so it's not in the- uh, really? That's odd. No, I don't remember it being in Romeo and Juliet, but then- so yeah. you didn't- you didn't speak like that when you went to Oxbridge? What? Never mind. But no, I, uh, did yeah. a bit of research into it, right? Go and, on. uh, one of the things that they use- Yeah. Is, uh, oh, I was out last night, did a 187. Yeah. That's the uh, murder. Yeah. But why use slang, right? Because apparently 187 is police slang. Yeah. Well, if you well it's gonna... not a slang, it's a- it's a code. Well, don't- don't use what the police know you're talking about. Yeah, I don't think they do it with police around. Do they not? Probably not. Carry on then. Yeah. <laughs> Carry on. Yeah. Then. <laughs> so, I, mean, I always remember the uh, Cockney rhyming slang. Supposedly yeah. originated because, you know, East End villains or whatever would make up their own slang so that if they're overheard yeah. in conversation, then they won't know what they're talking about. But just look, you know, just look it up in some kind of Cockney rhyming slang. Book. Yeah, I like, I like the idea of a, okay, where is he? Where's fingers? Wow, copper, I'm gonna tell you this, he's up the apples and pears. <laughs> exactly. well, I know what that means. Well, leave, leave the- leave the- leave the house then. Yeah. If you don't know that he's hiding up the apples and pears, you might as well shoot <laughs> off. Exactly. Well, I can't possibly figure that out, so I'll just have to shoot off. Yeah, where was he last seen? He was last seen with his trouble and strife. I know what that means. <laughs> well, you might as well shoot off then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a perfect code. Of course, though, uh, talking about Shakespeare, Shakespeare invented 1200 words, and slang gets in, so there are more and more words, and slang soon becomes, you know, the norm. There's no, there's no not real words and real words, you know, do you know what I mean? They're, they're just as valid if they're common parlance, so they they all become part of the, or they fade away and they're, they're not used because they're a fad. Yeah, like was up. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that's probably in the dictionary. That is, that, yeah, or, or seem to be. I was reading, uh, was it a couple of years ago, um, uh, you're gonna like this not a lot. Right. Got into the, yeah, it's a popular things got in there. Imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna like this, not a lot. Uh, Zigga Zig R, I think, got in or something. Oh no, girl power got in. Right, girl yeah, power as a, as a, as a, fra a common phrase. Yeah, I like your... Sorry, oh, go on. Oh, no, 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 you have to, you mate. No, it's just, it's just that, with the slang thing, did I tell you I was trying to read that, that book about, uh, the governor? Oh yes. And that, that was full of that, and it had a page on the front that you had to keep going to when, uh, do you know what I mean? When, when he used a bit of slang, you had to sort of go, right, I don't know what he means. Glossary. Right. Just, uh, nip back, have a look. I but thought you meant, when you said oh, there's a page at the front, I thought you meant the cover with his face on. I can't remember who I'm reading <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah. Oh, there he is. Is this the book that you nearly finished reading but you realised all the pages were in the wrong order? Yeah. He, <laughs> <laughs> he bought a cheap book. Right, a second, a uh, second shot. Started reading it, loving it. Then he started reading about this bloke and he went from jail to school and then he looked at the page numbers and they were all out of order. <laughs> How annoying is that? <laughs> I mean, you yeah. never read books, do you? I never, never read one, right? And Suzanne, it was a week and we were going to Hastings because you two had done me head in, yeah. right? She said, I'm gonna take you away so you relax and what have you. So, ended up not relaxing because it was like putting a jigsaw together. <laughs> yeah. I'd started reading it on the train, thinking, loving this. It's a really interesting story about this fella who, you know, didn't have a great life as a kid, starts getting into a bit of crime, what have you, turns out to be the governor. Mm. But it wasn't as easy as that because, like you say, it was <laughs> started off at school, then he was in prison. And he's like, oh god, he's started young. <laughs> and then, next thing, he's like married, and he's like, hang on, 
it's like twelve. <laughs> and then he's, he's, quite, he's had a heart attack. <laughs> and then, like, but I just thought it was part of the thing because I read chapter one and then it did say chapter twelve, but I thought, right, it's like that sort of done in that stylish way that everyone's doing. <laughs> What kind of a biography? Look at that! messing with the I was, medium. I was born in the East End. Take one onion. <laughs> add some. Uh, <laughs> this is the idea that an East End villain's going to write his autobiography, but think yeah, I'm just to play with the form a bit. I think get quite postmodern with this. <laughs> no, but you know he's I mean? barely able to write. Probably. Yeah, oh, you, you could say that about him, Steve. I wouldn't. I think he's an educated man. Go on, next car. But uh, yeah, just because it was like two for a tenner, that shouldn't be like. Oh well, you you know you got a, you got a good offer. So no, that's rare. That it, it, I'm yeah. sure the bloke selling it did not know that the page was out of order. Let's face it, Carl, you read it and didn't realise. Yeah. So you can't I really love blame the him. You got almost <laughs> half the way through before you realised. I oh, know. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, you know. Still, that a teacher, and that's put you off books for life, hasn't it? Well, I don't I don't like getting into books now. I just read snippets of information. Play record. Play record. No, I'm just going to tell you about a bit of. Information that I was reading. Okay. And I can't. Well, we play. No, no, I've got time for a bit of drivel before we play next. Well, I'd rather appear a tune and come back for drivel because I think people are tuning in for drivel. So let's tease them. Okay. Let's have a record. Then some absolute shite <laughs> from Carl <laughs> Pilkington. Excellent. <laughs> Look forward to that. Long view, and further. I love that one on XFM 104.9. Mr. Ray's Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. All right, Carl, what did you learn? Right, uh, like I say, I don't like reading books. There's too much. To Words. Take in too much words. I'm busy in that. Yeah. Um, I don't like reading books, actually. But right. go on. So, but I uh, have done. <laughs> so go on. Right. So I was looking in this magazine, right? And it was more about. Do you know, I'm, I'm not that impressed with Einstein and Newton and that lot. No, why should you be? What have they ever done? Go on. No, but. You know, you know the fact. You see, the the Columbus thing. He's another one, isn't he? Who got a bit of praise for finding America. Yeah. And it's like it would. Someone else would have come across that at some point. Yep. Right. <laughs> and yet, news this week. They've found two new types of frog. Right. <laughs> no one's making a fuss. And look how small they are compared to what he bumped into. And that's what I'm saying. People make a big deal out of. All these people who are finding stuff, right? Yeah. So the next person. I, I, I mean, as, uh, my head's buzzing, but I can't be bothered. I actually can't be bothered. Don't think this reaction's a good reaction. I don't know where to start with this drivel, but carry on. Right. So anyway, the next fella who. The I'm next on... fella. I d I, see, I don't know. You talk in riddles. The next fella I'm going to talk about. Go Einstein, on then. Yeah. Right. Everyone raves about him all the time. Yeah. Right? So I'm trying to get into my head. Yeah. Like, why is, why is amazing and that. Yeah. Right? Okay. So, did a bit of reading up on him in this science magazine. Yeah. Right? Now, I read it, it's only, only, a, you know, I don't know, 200 words, whatever, trying to get across what he worked out. But I read it last night. Is it relativity like, you're talking about? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, to say, yeah, like, I just made that word up. It, it, you heard that's, it? That, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was his big was, yeah, Okay, so the turn of the words, as far as you recall. So anyway, so I read it and I was like, I don't, I don't know what, what, what is going on about here, right? So <laughs> Suzanne was with me, I said, can you read this? She said, I'm watching Sex in the City. Yes. Right? I said, right, but can you read it and explain to me what I don't understand here? She said, well, I might not understand <laughs> it's it. Yeah. It's great. It's like, she's thinking, I, I haven't got kids. Yeah. And yet he still wants me to help with his homework and yeah. I'm watching telly. Yeah. I've been at work all so day. She said, look, go in the bedroom and read it out loud to yourself. Maybe it make more sense if you read it out loud. <laughs> yeah. right, so I said, right, I'll go and do that then. And it was good because it's cool in there anyway, right? So <laughs> I went in there. <laughs> so read it out, uh, twice. Went back in and said, I don't get it still. <laughs> So she said, right, wait ten minutes and I saw it out. So I was sat there looking at it, trying to work it out before she had to look at it. I was like, no, I forget this. Now, what he was saying is, yeah. if you send a man to the moon, yeah. right, Yeah. he was saying uh, to the fella in, in the rocket, yeah. it would seem like twenty years to him. Yeah, not the moon, but yeah. No, it was, that's what it said, it said the moon. Well, it wouldn't, because it's only about... Uh, uh. No, but listen, listen. So, it took 20, 20 years to the fella, yet people who are on the Earth, it would seem like 2,000. Yeah, because cause time is relative, not... not. I don't... 
What, what do you mean? Right. Well, the, well, listen, the fact is that it's, it's tending towards the speed of light where it really makes a difference. They've even done it with atomic, um, uh, clocks where they've, uh, sent one up, uh, even in Concord, and it's like point not one of a second difference. What, what is the watch? Yes. Yeah, because of uh, uh, greater speeds. But why does speed affect how a watch works? Right, I don't well, think this is a conversation. Because, look, speed, I, it's speed. Sorry, see what I mean, no, see what what I mean Steve. Right. See what I've done. I don't think this is a conversation to be had on a Saturday afternoon on a no, radio show. But I'm just saying, though. It's not, it's not me, is it? It's, it I is mean, you. you. You went quiet, Steve. No, because- You're having problems I, Because there. I'm not gonna be able to explain it to you. I will explain it to you in a light, right. frothy way. It's, it's, it's speed equals, to, basically velocity equals distance over time, when velocity, uh, doesn't change, and nor does distance, no, time has to. That's his theory. Mm. Yeah? Well, we just got What's your point then, again? Carl? What's your I'm, point? I'm, I'm just, I'm just saying, uh, because you don't understand you know, it, it's, it's like, worthless. You, I was trying to explain to Newton, like, that basically formulated, the, you know, the, the laws of the universe, uh, the three laws of the universe. Uh, even playing snooker, I'm trying to drop something. I was going, well, equal and opposite reaction and all these sort of stuff, right? And, um, and he was going, what did he do apart from the apple on his head with the gravity? And I went, well, what do you mean? And he went, well, what, why was it a problem? If we were been floating mm -hmm. round, yeah. I'd have called him in. But since we're not, we don't need him. Yeah. That's what he said. Play a record. Yeah. You're a buffoon. So there's these two new kinds of frogs, you think? You're joking. What, a monkey had a hat? <laughs> the monkey had a bicycle. <laughs> like... I believe in a thing called love by the darkness on XFM 104.9. Last show. Possibly the last ever show. It's up to the K-Man. Little pilky, baldy pilky, little whingy, Dimo Manco, as he's called his Latin name, Dimus Mancoid. All right, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're gonna miss this, aren't you? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Good show, though. Enjoying the last show. Yeah, yeah, it's, you know, it's all right, and uh, you know, I hope it gets better because uh, Telegraph are listening today. What's the you? Telegraph, the paper. Yeah. Why? Do, what do you, are they? Why did you say that? Just, uh, Jenny, the PR woman, said to me yesterday, she said, uh, just, you know, do some good topics and that so you don't have to worry there. Would <laughs> <laughs> um, you, what, they phoned up to say, uh, hello, it's Telegraph here, we'll be listening tomorrow. I don't know, I don't know what, they, what they're doing. They're Are they doing a, a review of it or something? I don't know. Why would they do that? With, there's no reason to. I, I, I'm a bit, I, why didn't you mention this earlier? Well, 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 so the Telegraph have said, uh, we be li why would they call up to say we'll be listening? It's because a free said, country. Because they said they'll be listening, but also, can you make sure you record it? Because if we can't listen to it because of the pirate stations that are on at the weekend, because it affects our signal right. and stuff. Whoever's listening must listen and know there's a problem with pirates. And they said, can you? Well, they're probably just doing a feature about radio shows or something. Then they're going to tear us to shreds. They're going to. I yeah. mean, listen. To the, sorry, seriously, the drivel we've talked today. I mean, uh, what are they going to make of it? That's, well, like, no, that's no, a broadsheet I, newspaper. I, I think I know what Monday's headline's going to be. I don't think it's going to be like you know they're going to forget about the power cuts. It's not going to be about you know the inquiry or terrorism or anything. It's going to be no more to knob news. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's going to. Oh. They're going to love. Well, that, I mean, I, I, seriously, I I have a little bit of self respect. And if I'd known something, quality, a quality newspaper was going to be listening, I wouldn't have turned up today. Because, I, I mean, I'm an award winner, you know, and I'm a respected television writer. And I've, you know, won awards, sort of classy. Don't worry, though. And Don't worry. Li what have we talked about? Knobs. We've had the worst quiz on radio. Mm, yeah. We've had you trying to explain yeah. relativity. You didn't even understand what that word meant. You, I don't think you recognise the word. You read There's that article. Words I don't you recognize. read that article four times, twice out loud. <laughs> why you could, where you could hear Sex and the City music, right? And yet you, that I, I, my, that word might have been a clamp instance. You hadn't heard it before, so I don't know. Do you look between the lines? Do you actually look at the words? No, there's too many words, though. <laughs> <laughs> the Telegraph are going to love that because there's loads of words. The Telegraph have got loads of words. I mean, there's cover with it, words. Which way up do you hold the magazine when you read it? <laughs> no, but there is too many words. I mean, yeah. Yeah. people, are they upside down? There's, 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 I mean, yeah. There's too many words. There are too many words in the world. Do you know what this one means, right? Go this on. is one I learnt the other day. Uh, mm. I think it's, uh, anti -Dewean. No. What does that mean? Old. Sorry, how do you spell it? Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> of course you don't. anti -Dewean. No, I've, I've never heard of that word. It, 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 mean, it means old. 
But the annoying thing is, it takes longer to say, um, and it's the fact that if you but use where that do you, where do you, people, where do you hear that word and on what context and- Someone told me about it. I was talking to someone about long words and that, cause you mentioned something when we were out drinking. And I said to you, why did you say that then? What, what word does that mean? And then you had to explain it and I said, well you didn't have to say that, you could have just said blah blah. But can I say, Steve, I wasn't sort of trying to cut him out or being pretentious, it must have been just a normal word in my vocabulary that he didn't know. Wait, wait, wait vocabulary pretentious? I- like, <laughs> You lost me. <laughs> you like, you lost, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell I you what. you're scared by syllables. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just- I'll hmm. tell you what though, um, uh, I was gonna do a feature about this. It's funny you should say it. I was gonna do a feature. My next feature I'd written down is how good the Telegraph is, the newspaper. Yeah. It's bloody brilliant. I love it. Cause oh. it's informative, um, it's impartial, it does, uh, this research good. I think it's a lovely layout. The, f the photography is brilliant. Oh. Um, I love. do you know what? I like the bloody font. I, <laughs> I love <laughs> the bloody font. Oh, do you mind something else? I mean, you what? say it's sort of, you know, I mean, if there's any bias at all, I mean, there isn't because it's apolitical, but I, mean, I bloody love the Tory party. I love, wow, well, that's not, let's not go into it, but I mean, but I, I mean, love, I just like the I just like the journalism and the, the way the size of the paper. Do, 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 I like the way they're fair. They'd never, they'd never like, uh, you know, slag us off. No, no. But also, so, I think it's because they understand that, you know, we don't really care and so we can't be blamed for anything they hear on the radio. No. Really our fault. It's and more and, sort of and anything we said that was like, you know, a bit nasty or stupid was, was probably sort of like some clever sort of ironic postmodern. So, yeah. Satire. Player record. Yeah. Brilliant Telegraph. It's, it's really fairly priced, don't you think? I think it's too cheap. <laughs> I know. The, uh, the cult there, she sells Sanctuary. Um, on XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais with me Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. Now if the Telegraph are um, listening, and they're, they're, you know, whoever it is, they're writing their article, and they're, they're coming up with sort of words like cheap, smutty, um, low, low brow. brow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. L uh, in, in our defence, could I just say that we're pandering to our listenership? Yes. You know, I mean, th this, this station, draw I mean, w without exception, the people who work here, the executives, the DJs, are alcoholics. Mm -hmm. Drug users, yep. sex offenders. Check the register. You know, They're and we're there. trying to fit in with that for two hours a week. So we really have to sort of really bring it down. Seriously dumbing down. Um, but if you want, we, we can should do our, stuff. We, well, we do our normals, like we talk about usually. Tits. Women. Well, no. yeah. Satire, yeah. satire, satire. Mean, political satire, social political. and political satire. Yeah. If you listen any other week, that's what you would have heard. Well, we and Steve are sort of like quite, you know, political Pretty animals and, and, uh, you know, oh, Proust. <laughs> oh, I love him. Oh, I wish he'd, I wish he'd resign as governor of, uh, yeah. France. Have you read Martin Amos's new novel? I love it. It's all, it's so... Brilliant. Lovely. Very long. Um, so, uh... Oh, politics though. I mean, what do you make of politics, Rick? Um, I, I'm sorry, I was just planning on going to the English National Opera tonight to yeah. see... To see, brilliant um, Tartuffe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, politics is brilliant. It's my yes. favourite thing. Say I'm, something, I'm, say something political. satirical and comical about, say, John Prescott. Oh, he's got... <laughs> It, stop eating pies, Prescott. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't like to be him about now. <laughs> so that's, that's the sort of What do you make of George W. Bush? He's a bit stupid, isn't he? Well, the, that's the dangerous thing. He's the most powerful man in the world, and I just think, I, I hope he's sort of, he thinks about stuff he does first. <laughs> oh, please, please. So please. that's- So that's sort of wise as well as, as well as comic. I thought of something about Bush as well. Go on. But it's, it's about his name and a woman's family. Oh. So I was gonna bring those two I together. I think it's try. fine though. I don't think that's, I think that's still quite highbrow because you've incorporated Bush. Uh, which mean, meaning the president. Means family as well. <laughs> so I think we're pleasing both. <laughs> we got both camps. Um, <laughs> camp. That reminds me of something. I know. Yeah. So that's so if you're listening, Telegraph. Um, Daily Telegraph. That is brilliant. Sort of thing you're brilliant. Of, that's sort you're of thing brilliant. We're able to do. Too many words for Carl. But what about some adverts? I'd love to. Buy the Telegraph. Excellent. Black Rebel Motorcycle Club. Stop. On XFM 104.9. Well, for Telegraph are listening, they'll be, they'll be loving the music. Oh, that's great music. They'll be loving knob news. Uh, coming up, Telegraph, just to keep listening because monkey news is coming up. Mm -hmm. And so we do the results of Rockbusters, the, the worst quiz. The on best quiz, the best, right, quiz. best quiz. Oh, yeah. On radio. Do that shortly, although, um, 
probably you're thinking, Rick, um, isn't it time that we do our usual roundup of what's been happening in the news? Yeah. Which we always do every week. Yeah. Uh, we always do something. We should, I mean, basically, if you're listening and you're a new listener, say you work at a newspaper, we always try to be informative, just try and put stuff out there that just educates people, informs people. What are you people. thinking? Well, I said monkey news is coming up, but what have yeah. you got? No, I was just looking on the net there and just found a couple of quite important news stories, probably worth mentioning. Um, policeman caught photographing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why it makes me laugh. It's just the phrasing, I suppose. It's, it's the headline. Policeman caught photographing up woman's skirt. <laughs> no, um, he wasn't up there taking a picture of Big Ben. <laughs> no, he wasn't going, can I just sit up here? I'm just going to take a picture of that, that <laughs> seagull over there. No. He was facing the camera up a woman's skirt. <laughs> he was indeed. Right. Uh, a policeman in Japan is facing disciplinary measures after he was caught photographing up a woman's skirt <laughs> with a hidden camera while on duty. Uh, the 42-year-old sergeant, who's not been named, used a digital camera to secretly snap the shots when the woman was reporting a stolen bicycle. So he was actually... He was actually doing his proper job. He'd obviously thought to himself, I'll bring him a digital camera today, on the off chance a beautiful woman comes in to report a crime or robbery, I'll have it ready, I'll have it positioned, you know, yeah. in such a way. But this is interesting, this is how he got caught, okay? The woman became suspicious after she saw a flash go off. Brilliant. <laughs> I mean, this Not a secret at all. <laughs> Sorry, did I just see your shoe? Your shoe just seemed to just bring into life. There was light. There was light. Yeah, I think I've had me. some. I had some set fire to some magnesium that was <laughs> no, on the no, end of it. No, it no, won't no, happen only, again. Well, it's only you and I in here, and your shoe was yeah. suddenly lit. Why are you standing like that? Why is your shoe just sort of like between my feet? There's no reason. This There's is no how I always stand. Just, just did, where? What did the bike look like? Flash. <laughs> so, <laughs> are you taking pictures for me? No, 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 no. And no, I'm not. And you should be wearing knickers anyway. Well, do you know that? What? How did you know I'm not? How did I know what? The, I'm not wearing any... I didn't know you. I don't know what you've got up there. Well... I don't know what it looks like, and I never... There's no way I could. <laughs> of course, that, that would be... It would be the rough of that conversation in Japanese. I know, yeah. Do yeah. you know, um, you just mentioned there about, sort of, no knickers and that. <laughs> it's just gonna be your Auntie Nora. <laughs> no, 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 no. Right. It's just, you know, like, the... The last flat that I lived in, I always had a good view across the road, and I could see, uh... It was the hairy, hairy. There was the hairy Chinese. Well, not a hairy kid, Chinese kid. He, he was just a Chinese kid, actually. Yeah, yeah. Running about. Because that's rare, isn't it? Hairy Chinese kids are very yeah. rare, isn't it? Yeah. There's only one official sighting, isn't <laughs> there? Yeah. In one of those uh, shit little magazines that you buy. Uh, yeah, he was running around in his underpants. Did you? Me. Sorry, you just swore ironically. I mean, I imagine if there's any newspapers listening, you did that because he's sort of jokey and yeah, yeah, yeah go yeah, on. Yeah. That's not swear. And there was on. the old woman who didn't move. She was just sat there reading the book all who the time. Who we think possibly died, and no well, one came around yeah, for weeks. Yeah. But, and now I've moved, right, mm. and it was quiet for a bit, I always look at what view I'm getting, sure. right, uh, looked across and it was just sort of empty, sort of flats ready for people to move in and yeah. that, right. Anyway, people are in there now, <laughs> right, um, and they've put all the furniture in, but yeah. I haven't put any curtains up, oh. right. So anyway, I'm, I'm sort of washing up, just having a, having a look out the window, yeah. right. Uh, girl sort of, uh, wandering about, you know, knickers on. Right. With no knickers on. You mean no naked? Knickers. Well, she had a bra on. Right, but, okay. But, uh, she was no probably looking for a knicker. So, I thought, oh. And I don't know how long I was looking. No. <laughs> right. But anyway, she looks across. Oh, God. I think she spotted me. Yeah. I think, oh, God. I felt really bad. Yeah. I said to Suzanne. <laughs> Sorry. Is this some sort of peeping Tom confession while the telegraph are listening? <laughs> I've no idea. Well, it's, it's not, that's the thing, though. Peepington. I, if, if I was peeping, she was peeping as well, because she was looking over. Works both ways, doesn't it? Yeah, but, but yeah, yeah, all she could see of you was your bald head. Yeah. No, no. And but your hands moving as you were washing up. That's a white looking substance. <laughs> rotting a particularly up. stubborn stain on this yeah. glass. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Imagine that! Imagine if she looked across. <laughs> I'm assuming the sink is lower but, than the window. But but did, didn't she just like just cover up or something? Or she looked back and go, "Oh, you're looking at you're looking at funny." Well, <laughs> the thing I did. What? I thought, oh, just thought I'd drop me boxer shorts. Because I thought, what? well, Suzanne said, "What are you doing?" What are you talking about? What are you talking about? No, just 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 so they can see me cheeks of me. What are now. you talking about? No, this because I thought. If she thinks I'm ro walking about in the nude as well, then we've both got something out of it. Carl! This sounds like, this sounds like a bad excuse in court. <laughs> I know, yeah. I know. This is- Or the plot of a film on Channel 5. I mean, this, this is like the doctor who got done, right, for exposing himself to a patient, and set, and brought, and then, then painted that little thing 
um, that you look down their throat at pink. Yeah. And going and going, this is what they saw. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, uh, so sorry, you immediately, so you were looking at a woman dancing around naked, right? So well, the, the only thing you could do was immediately uh, drop your boxer shorts. So she looked across, saw you fully clothed, saw you took your boxer shorts. No, no, she wouldn't have done because it's sort of just the top half and the sink's at a side angle, so I was sort of looking out. So this she is wouldn't genius. Have, so she wouldn't have seen your trousers then anyway? No, she did. I, I moved in front of the window. So you then <laughs> made <laughs> <laughs> you actually climbed in front of the window. <laughs> oh, this is amazing! So you climbed in front of the window uh, to show oh, off. No, it uh, wasn't your naked though. No, no, Sue's answered, "What are you doing?" And I think she did. <laughs> what are you looking at? So I sent you in here to clean up. What are you up? doing? I'm just, I'm just taking my trousers down, standing over the window. <laughs> Why? Because there's a naked woman across the road. <laughs> what do you think I'm doing, Suzanne? <laughs> I'm exposing <laughs> myself while looking at some free leave funny. It, leave it, leave it, leave What's it. up with you, Suzanne? Leave it, leave it then, leave it. Christ. Are we, are we doing Rockbusters or yeah. what? Yeah. Oh, she sent you in there to read up on Einstein. <laughs> 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 A final question. <laughs> what did the woman yeah. across the way? What yeah. happened? What well, was her reaction? I didn't look again. I just thought oh. you've, you've seen a bit of action as well. We're both happy. Let's let's leave it. Brilliant. So, so were you waddling around like a penguin with your trousers on your end? Yeah. I just was walking about, and Susan said, "What are you doing?" I said, "I'll explain to you in a bit, but don't look out the window <laughs> because then it's excellent." Obvious. Then yeah. her, then he sees she calls her husband to look at Carl going naked. And he goes, "Oh, she's got a quick, Suzanne, get him out. <laughs> yeah. There's only one with England. Get some more friends. <laughs> They've gone one more." Anyway, brilliant. Right, well, play a record so, and come back to Rockbusters and Monkey News. We haven't got enough time to do rock busted. Oh, God almighty! Hanging round with Transformer. A little bit of Lou Reed. Nearly finished. Nearly finished. Twelve minutes until we are no more. But don't forget those. Monkey News still to come. Well, yeah, don't forget that. Monkey News still to come. But now the answers to. Rockbusters, right, do the clues. Alright, the, uh, first clue was, uh, this vegetable started its life down under. Uh, the initials were K.O. That was Collie Osborne, right? Collie Osborne. <laughs> the second one was... No, 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 what, what, are we letting that go? Yep. We haven't got time, Rick. Well, it's just not, it's, it's, it's just not the word. We haven't got time, Rick. Also, cauliflowers Cauli Cauli don't start, their, okay. uh, don't start uh, down under. They're, they're, they're on top. It's not like carrots. No, or down under is in Osborne. Osborne, it was born, born in Os Osborne. Osborne. Right. Right. Collie. I thought you meant start, but... Co her name's not so, Collie! Right, the second one was, uh... The things that you normally find on the beach, right? They, they've been found floating around the moon. That's the space shells. Right, specials. <laughs> tweak it a bit. This is rubbish. I mean, I, I, I tell you, I, no, this isn't even funny though. Special. I mean, they're no good at all. Cryptic. It's not cryptic. It's wrong. Cryptic. It's we not cryptic. cryptic. The last one was, uh, well, if uh, if you put that many in the post, I'm surprised I didn't receive one. Go on. That's FC fifty cent. Right? What? Fifty cent. It was fifty cent. I didn't receive any, so. So. <laughs> Collie Osborne, Collie. Her oh. name's not Collie. Her name is not Collie. Doesn't matter. Well, one. Well, well it done. doesn't matter. Well done to Gina Ferry, who has emailed in. She's got all those answers right. Yeah, just, and, uh, just emailing your address and that. Mm. Yeah, email that. You're such you. an idiot, Carl. As are you, Gina. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Loosen your hold by South. That's great. On XFM 104.9. Well, that's nearly it. Rick, can I just say thanks to everyone who's emailed in over the weeks and months we've been on, because uh, obviously we're too lazy to even send them a response or a reply, um, but we do appreciate it. We do that, appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, same with the, all the letters and stuff that we, you know, we can't. Yeah, people send stuff in all the time and they say they like the show or they don't, or they contribute little ideas and stuff, and we do read them and we do appreciate it. It's just that we, uh, when you've got someone like Carl Pilkington in the studio, you just need to pick his brain constantly and you've got re no real time for admin, but uh, thank you for sending in all the nice uh, letters and responses and stuff. Well, finally, um... We should let people know that next week, for the, uh, foreseeable future, uh, it's Adam and Joe. Brilliant. Oh, uh, brilliant. And they're standing in for us this time next week. Well, you say standing in, but possibly replacing full time unless Carl Pilkington decides to change his mind and come back. What do you think, Carl? Uh, you've enjoyed today's show, I know. Yeah, it's been all right. Yeah? You, any t attempted to come back when we, uh, when we finally mm. return? Maybe a little rest to make you sort of like forget how annoying I am. Cause no, that, because that, then it'll that just... is my secret weapon. Sometimes, you know, because it's the thing that you can, um, you can, f uh, uh, 
Just fleece a sheep as many times as you want, but you can only skin it once. Sure. So what I do is sort of like, I, I fleece you, I never actually you know, completely lose a friend. I tease them and talk to them to the point where they're gonna leave me, and I go, oh, anyway, how are you doing? They go, um, I sort of confuse them. Yeah. And that's what I've done with you today. And I think over the next couple of months where I'm sort of nice on the phone, I'm not squeezing your head, you'll go, he's all right, Rick, what yeah. and, then and then I, then and I then get I you back in it. it and, and then, then I'll, I'll right, absolutely exactly rip you to pieces that's again. What I'll be doing with. So, but hopefully, and also, um, unlike a lot of my friends who are clever, um, I don't have to worry about you because you will forget. You'll yeah. I mean, because you've got such a, you've got a tiny little intellect. And <laughs> I'll, do you know what I mean? You'll forget Steve. this conversation even took place. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's what everyone's been waiting for. for it's what Carl time. exists for for the last time. It's the, it's monkey news. Play so, jingle. Oh, chimpanzee that! Monkey news. Right, are you, are you uh, familiar with Undreth Monkey? Keep the talking. Undreth Monkey? Undreth. Oh, yeah, like as in like, uh, one more than 99. Hundredth. Yeah. The one hundredth monkey. Yeah, are you, are you familiar with that? No. No. Uh, uh Anyway, thanks, that was well, monkey well, news. We'll uh, that, next then. week, Adam and Jet. what do you mean <laughs> you're gonna leave that? Well, I thought it was a popular phrase or something. What, hundredth monkey? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean a popular phrase? What, what, why? What? Because you're gonna do songs and phrase with it next week. We've said it once before, hundredth monkey. <laughs> no, it's just, uh, it says the expression hundredth monkey. Well, do it, it anyway, what's the story? From. Well, it's from the 1950s, right? right? And the way that they got it, because, um, <sighs> they were following some monkeys about, right? And they started- <laughs> Who was? Who was? Who was? Journalists. Oh yeah, why? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just to see what what they're up to. Right? Okay, so they're following some monkeys <laughs> around. Yeah, <laughs> what was it? What a documentary. Anyway, one of them. Come on, come on. One of them washed some potatoes. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. Let's leave that. Right. <laughs> let's leave. Let's leave. Is, leave is, that is, come on. A monkey what? washed some potatoes. Can we leave that one? And no, no. no. It's You've got to do it now. <laughs> they're, they're following a, what is it, like, like, sort of like a family. Is it a family of monkeys oh, or it was, a... it was just one chimp and it was washing a potato and he thought, that's a bit odd. Right? Yeah. And oh, yeah. It turns out that, that, that ended up teaching another monkey. Yeah. How to wash a potato. No, they do it, they do it, they go down and wash them in the sea. Cause they like, they like the taste of salt. And the it's, weird it's, thing it's, is though, they when, pass it got, on, go when it on. got to the hundredth monkey, right, even though it hadn't been taught how to wash a potato. Yeah. It automatically knew. It knew what to do. What do you mean? What, what do you mean? It, it was in them. It was in them that, that they knew that when they get a potato they had to wash it. That isn't the monkey news, I'm just I'm just saying that's where the expression comes from, but you haven't even heard of that. So Well, there's a couple of things there. That it could be a, a, another upshot and you know, an I instinct is, is part of your genetics and anything else. Washing a potato. But, but you can't pass on acquired characteristics. So that's nonsense. If you mean that uh someone was taught they had a child and it knew it. There's no there's no chemical uh, memory as such in So that wasn't even the monkey news. No, the the monkey news. You know, we've we've covered a lot of stuff. There was sad, there was sad, sad stuff, wasn't there? Yeah. Uh, there's some funny stuff in there. You know. Yeah. yeah. Um. Do yeah, monkey yeah, news. Playing robbers and that. Um. Football team. A monkey football team. Yeah, in mm -hmm. uh, Costa Rica. Oh yeah. Uh. Got all the uh, got all the team members there, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> all the different things. Um. Little goalkeeper. Apparently he's on transfers from some other club. But the bit that got me attention is, apparently he's a holder of PhD of physics. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to have a look at that? Oh, the goalkeeper. Yeah, just the goalkeeper. The the others haven't done that much. <laughs> the others haven't done that much. Well, I believe that he's got better exam results than you, Carl. But I don't believe he's got a PhD in physics. Good Obviously. Guy. Do you know what the name of the team is? Coconuts. <laughs> Oh, so if the Telegraph are listening, that is the sort of quality entertainment you get. Well, you don't let's, anymore. Let's just put a song on there. Yeah, that's the end. What, Goodbye, what, everybody. What, what have a, leave? have yeah. a lovely summer. Yeah, the rest of it. And, uh, we might see you in October. We might not. It's up to Carl Pilkington. Chances are slim. So call 0207 766 6000. Ask for Carl Pilkington. Or email him. What's this? Or, this is uh, Tim Buckley to end with. I think you'll enjoy this. It's called Once I Go. Andrew Phillips. Call Andrew Phillips. See ya.